up, everyone? This is Soju Talk, your weekly shot of K-pop. We're coming at you with a super spicy episode 266. We're reporting on January 22nd, 2024. I'm talking to you today. We got Warren. Hello, evil dunk. And Anita. Hello. Oh, um, as a quick reminder, check us talk on your favorite podcast platform. Look to us on YouTube and join the Soju Talk Discord and be a part of the nation. We're bringing that kind of energy today, you know? Are you a drill rapper now? Is this what it is with your I new got hat? The, I got the Michigan championship hat on. Winners oh, just win. Looks nice. All I do is win. win, 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 win. Um, all right. After <laughs> hours today, we're doing a 2015 K-pop song World Cup. So we're going to be looking back. At 2015, we already did this for 2014. Y'all loved it. We're bringing it back. We're going to do it for 2015. A lot of banger songs in that year as well. So that's mm -hmm. what we're doing in the after hours. Today, we're covering um, three songs, right? Yep. Sistar, 19, No More My Boy. That's a fire name in itself. Um, we have G-Idol with a pre-release called Wife. And we have the debut of Pledis' new boy group, To Us, with Plot Twist. Let's start at the top, though. Sistar, 19, No More My Boy. Um, so they were originally under Starship, but I believe they're doing this kind of subunit comeback under a company called Clap. And their last, uh, mm -hmm. their other two subunit songs were Gone, Not Around Any Longer. I remember that one. And My Boy, of course, the two um, legendary tracks from them. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. This is clearly third place out of those three songs. Am I wrong, guys? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, let's, uh, let's be honest here, guys. Dive wow. right in. Straight away. We're, we're going in. No, like, I don't got time for no bullshit. Like, let's wow. be honest. This is whelming, okay. this song. Am I wrong? Okay, whelming. I don't think you're wrong. I, maybe I wouldn't have worded that way, but I think for me, between, so looking at their previous last two songs under this subunit right yeah my boy gone not running longer i would say my boy was my favorite like i liked that sound from them very it's it, i feel like it was very reminiscing of the time when the subunit was made um and i was kind of hoping that this since it references my boy would have more of that but it didn't <laughs> so I'm a little, I feel like maybe my expectations were a little different as to like what the sound was going to be for this. Um, I feel like it's an in-between. It's between the sound of My Boy, between the sound of Gone and Around Any Longer, which mm. is not like that slow, but it's not quite, I don't know, it doesn't yeah, quite have that. Oomph. You know what mm -hmm. it is? It's like it's got it's got the it's got the melody style of like mid two thousand tens, but it's also got the arrangement style of like right now. It's it's like a down tempo disco mm -hmm. thing, which is you know uh, everybody's kind of done at some point of the rat last like three four years, um, and you know that's that's fine. It's like a it's like a mature take on uh, what K pop is nowadays. Um, and that's, I mean, that's mm. cool. It's just no, the, it's I, not fine because this song <laughs> lacks any progression. That's the issue. Yeah. It's a little like, repetitive. If you repetitive? Listen, if they sang like the a acapella version of the song, like two entire sections are literally the same, right? More or less. Yeah. yeah. Um, mm -hmm. they just add more sound effects the second time they sing the no more my my boy whatever that thing, right? That's the little bit of chanty singing part there, but like it literally just repeats twice with more sound effects the second time. And you know what um, the issue is? Like the chorus itself is pretty repetitive. Like they repeat the word no. 64 no, no, times. No. 64 mm. times. That's eight squared. That's a lot of times. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, wow. did we not think of a more creative chorus than repeating the word no from mm. no more multiple times? You know what I mean? Um, you know, like, I, I was like, I was okay with the song until it just like didn't go anywhere. Right. Up until that point, mm. I was like, okay, we're doing something fun here. You know, Sister 19. Yay. Let's go. Like, Hyorin and Bora, woo! All right? And then mm -hmm. the court, they just kept doing the no, 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 no. And it just kept, like, going over and over again. And I was like, God damn it, guys. <laughs> like, we wait, we wait 11 years for this, guys. Like, um. Okay, well, here's the thing. I kind of feel or I wish that this is more of, like, a, like a warm-up, you know? Like, we're kind of getting back into it. I, I don't think this will be the last thing they come really? out with. For this subunit, really? I hope not. Maybe we could do something more fire, guys. Right? Yes. Do you do you actually believe more things are to come for Sister Star Nineteen? Why not? It I, depends on if Clap Entertainment can make enough money to do it again. That's true. 
Yeah, I, clap, clap for all intents and purposes is not the most well-funded company, as far as I can tell. Um, mm-hmm. Their current right now, they manage Sistar Nineteen and Vanner. Um, mm-hmm. Sistar Nine, even with Sistar Nineteen, it's not a full-on like management deal. It's just they're there right now, um, temporarily for this, for this you know little thing. Um, so I feel like if they were in it for the long run, if they wanted to do more stuff with the brand name Sister 19, they probably would have mm-hmm. actually done something with like Starship or like mm-hmm. with the four of them. Um, but I don't know. At the moment, this seems like a one-off deal, one-off situation. Uh, I, I'm not sure what they ex- exactly wanted to do with this one. Um, also, like one of the things that I really don't like about the song is like, you know, like if you think about Hyorin, Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's like the best vocalist of our generation. I mean, she's an S tier singing talent, and we didn't get a lot mm-hmm. of ex- of that in this. No, right? what? Why not? Like, I don't understand. It's like, why? Who wrote this stupid fucking chorus? Which one yeah. of you fuckers? Like, look at Ryan John, my boy. Um, Pink Slip, Ooh. Inverness. I don't know who any of these people are except for Ryan John. So I'm gonna just use you as a scapegoat here. I'm sorry. Like, what? What? Is, come on. Like, really? Yeah, I did. I did feel like it was missing that to really show off the vocals. I mean, can we really trust Ryan John after he disbands Bugaboo after like one year, guys? Mm-hmm. Just throwing out some strays, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say though, you know, I feel like this this um this com- this unit comeback is really banking on nostalgia factor, which is working there. Obviously, it's kind of mm-hmm. short. It's like two minutes forty seven second music video. Right. Um, and I think they're banking on the fact of like the presentation is you remember us. Look how hot we are. Look at our outfits. They're great. Right. <laughs> OK. In that aspect, I thought they killed it. I thought they're mm. still really great performers. I feel like the, the them as a duo, a duo performance performances that they've done, seeing it in the past as you get now, I feel like they still it's still there. I feel like there's oh, yeah, the energy there's for them is still outf- there. There's one outfit I want to make a comment on. Right? Which one? I think um, I know which the, one. The white one. Yeah, uh, I knew you would say that uh, one. For the one that's kind of like a hair warmer fur material. Yeah. I don't know how to describe it, right? <laughs> Everyone, um, so I read this comment. It was not me. I did not make this up. They said, the top looks fine. The bottom looks like a diaper. <laughs> I knew exactly. <laughs> well, the, the thing you is, is that... You can't because... see it now. <laughs> the thing is, that because it's so... Sh- it's, they're very short, right? Of course. The bottom is very short. And because it's kind of inherently like very very high waisted yeah it's yeah. high waisted yeah it's just yeah it's hard it's just awkward it's not awkward look <laughs> yeah i mean they look good when the hood's on eh? Eh. <laughs> i i really like the other outfit though the denim one um yes, yes. that's a great outfit yeah. that was good um when we think about like popular k-pop it, it's typically like really young folks under 25 um, and I still think, I still believe there's a room for uh, K-pop with like folks over 30. Um, so this is like, mm. this is pretty cool to yeah. see. It shows a lot of potential. Um, that being said, this is going to come down to how well this uh, performs overall it, with the general public. Um, obviously, I'm not expecting a huge chart reaction given it just released a couple of days ago. But... At the same time, like it's I don't know I don't see a lot. Well, of they are here. they are making the promotion rounds. They appeared on the Ihori the seasons um show as well, and the the, the audience seemed to be really eating it up. Ooh, know? okay. Um, nice. looking it up on Melon right now. I don't know how well it is charting though. Off the top. I am looking right now, and I and I don't see it for the moment. Um. Yeah. Rip. Yeah. Um, we'll we'll see what happens. There's still room. It's, it's pretty. I mean, I was I was more happy about the event than the outcome at the end of this. Mm. Of they're watching it. Do you know what I mean? Like mm. I was happy to see yeah. them. I was a really big Bora fan. Literally ten years ago, I guess. Right? Like <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Wow. Um, um, and you know, I was a big fan of Sistar. I I, I miss Sistar as a whole thing. Um, for sure, especially in the summer. Mm, and yes. I think the satisfied oh some gosh. of the, the 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 wishes I had for this, but as a whole, I was just a little let down by the 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 chorus more or less of the song. Um, oh yeah, I would agree with that. Uh, fun fact: this is not the first mm-hmm. sequel to My Boy. My Boy already has a sequel. 
Did you guys know that? <laughs> it does. Wait, I f vaguely remember this. The Brave Bros. Three-person hip-hop group Electro Boys released Ma Boy 2 featuring Hyorin in uh Never mind. I 12 years ago. Oh my god. It, it sounds like it was released 12 years ago. That's what I'll tell you. Um, <laughs> I, I think No More is... Uh, I, I'm going to say it's mild. Sorry. I would say... I'd say... Tingly. <laughs> low tingly. Dude, you're struggling to you're give it that Struggling. <laughs> I'll call it tingly, but almost completely based on nostalgia. You know. Yeah, I yeah, yeah I have to I know. Mean, like, yeah, I can't help it. Mm. I, quite quite frankly, I don't have any nostalgia factor with Sitar. Like I really, yeah, I have an extreme amount of nostalgia. I was I a remember huge fan. Sister Nineteen back in the day. Uh, uh, bro, they, they are the uh, connoisseurs of the body rolls. They like, come on. That uh, was everywhere. It was everywhere. Oh, all right, let's move on to the next song. We have G Idol's pre-release with Wife. They are from Cube. Last three songs. We had uh, two of them in English, I believe. I want that, and I do. And then Queen Card was the last major release for them. I cut cream soup. Taste is coco loco. Okay, how do how do we? F this is a provocative pre-release, right? Is it your not room? It's so twinkle, twinkle. I mean, I, I think G Idols have been G Idols been doing a lot of like provocative stuff the last couple comebacks, right? Of course, of yeah. course, that's yeah. the direction they're going. Yeah. More like, like shock a... factor, shock and awe. Like Jesus Christ, are they doing this? Oh, they are, I guess, right? That's like the. <laughs> But the like vibe. what what I respect about them is that that, that that they they don't rely on just the shock factor for the shock factor. They they've had a reason to be, um, have that shock factor in their songs. Like there was a bit, uh, there was a layer of like justification in terms of, like this is the message we're trying to tell. Therefore, mm -hmm. uh, we have a song based off of uh, Marilyn Monroe. Um, mm -hmm. that, that was, stuff like that's pretty cool. Um, but did you like Wife though, Doug? I I feel like you really would. This is not your yeah. I yeah, I see you shaking your head like a man. Yeah, I, I tried. I tried. Yeah. I tried. Um. <laughs> it, okay. Me and so Why? me and Soyeon are just like oil and water, you know. Lately, in the uh, last few years. you're not picking up what she's putting down. Like, I understand. G Idols is doing extremely well, uh -huh. right? They're they're trying to. The, this next song might potentially be their third no, uh, song that goes, or their fourth song that goes number one in Korea which is an extremely good sign of how well they're doing, right? Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. But, like, the best way for me to put it is a lot of the Soyeon stuff for me comes with, like, a 5 to 10% amount of cringe that you just have to palate, right? Mm. And I just can't do it. I try. I try. Like I even I've kind of come around on the my boob and booty's hot at this point. Boob and right? booty hot. I've tried to come around on even the nude song. I try to I try to give it its its flowers, but like some of the stuff is just like God damn, it's it's a struggle for me. I think like with Tomboy, she they shifted a whole bunch to being a, being more campy with the music. Leading up to that, like if you look at Hua or like Dum Dee Dum Dee, um, that was not the case. Um, here, I feel like I honestly think it works pretty well compared to the other ones. I'll give you this on a face value. If I don't pay attention too much to like some of the like some of the lyrics and the way they're, they're <laughs> said and stuff, like I could get down with this in terms of just the 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 overall what's going on. And, and just to clarify, you're not you don't have an issue with the content, the their lyric itself. It's more about how it's like written, how it's sung. No, yeah. specifically how it's sung because like mm. this is something I've noticed. Like for it, this is the, the the example in this song I could point out. Other members of the group pronounce the word room as room, right? When Soyeon pronounces it, she goes loom, you know? Like <laughs> little things like that is what drives me insane. She you know exactly what care. I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. She just doesn't she give it up. No, care. she can. She can. She can, <laughs> Anita. She chooses not to. Do you know what I mean, Warren? Like that's that's like a little, a little no, um, side I mean, effect. like, oh. I really, I feel like it works. Like, you know what I feel like? Okay, Ooh. okay, okay. I, I also have not been the biggest fan of Soy in the last couple of comebacks. I still think she's like one of the best rappers of K-pop, mm. period. Um, of course. She's one of the best in-house producers who's involved in the game themselves. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. uh, but after she's like shifted, I haven't been the world's biggest fan of her style. But with this track... 
I can kind of, I can actually very clearly tell what kind of sound she's going for. Um, this yeah, time yeah. around, it's like this, like pop trap. Um, it, it's, I mean, a lot of female rappers have done this. Um, it's like, it's like the kind of sound like, not, not Ice Spice, but more like Flying a Boss. If you have seen like the two rappers run on Instagram and TikTok the last year, no. Okay, no. I have not. Okay. They're very campy as well. They're very silly as well. Um, and, and also, they're having a lot of fun, and it's hip-hop-based, and their rap is also kind of, like, very strongly characterized, if you know what I mean. Um, okay. And, and yeah, I, I can kind of see that. I can see, I can see where, she's going, where she's going for it. I, see, I feel like it works with a couple of these folks. Woogie pulls it off really well. Soyeon, I think, I honestly think she pulls it off really well. The lyrics are stupid. Oh, of, co of course, dude. But <laughs> like, that's a part of the, uh, that's a part of the package too. You know what I mean? Like, there's like, of, of course, like Yugi has completely drank the Soyeon Kool Aid. Like you know, like there's a, there's a, like she's she she's the main disciple of the Church of Soyeon. You know what I mean? Wow. Like, you know, like she's Yugi understands the camp that Soyeon is trying to do. Yep. One thousand yep. percent. Right, that yeah. that's the the best way. Like she completely gets what she's trying to do, and they are they share they sh they share like the one brain cell on that. They completely <laughs> like synergize on on what they're trying to do here. I yep. completely get that yep. for sure. The um, the one member that I think gets thrown under the bus a little bit is is Mian. I just don't think this kind of mm. style fits her perfectly. Um, but I, I mean, I think she did the best she could with her voice tone. Um, in her kind of way, I think I think that's still pretty cool. Um, and like at the end of the day. Do the lyrics make complete sense? No, but I get no. the. Uh, but I understand the message. It's pretty clear. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah of course. I can get the gist. Yeah, yeah. And at the end of the day, if I read like rap lyrics of a lot of songs that sound like this, do they make sense? I I don't think so. You know what I mean? <laughs> like it's yeah. I, so mm. I get the picture. I get where she's going for it. And in fact, I think she's doing a pretty good job of it. Um. So as a pre-release, I think it's pretty fun. You know, it's got a lot of choreo. Does this not sound like that SNL? Thing. Oh, um, it reminds me of that. The one with Emma Stone. The Emma Stone is in English, and then Ihan is the one in Korean. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever that thing is called, they call it I Broke My Arm Skit, is the, the Emma Stone one. Right. There's like a song that plays. It sounds a lot like this genre, what they're going for here. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's mm. it's a it's a big genre with a lot of songs that sound like this, to be quite frank. Um, but so, if anyone says, "Are you saying it's plagiarism?" Because I think that's a, that's a bit. Oh of no, a I'm not saying it's plagiarism. I'm just saying that's like what it feels like they oh, were going oh. for. Yeah, no, that's what they're oh. going for. It's, yeah, that's silly. That's why it's short and it works. You know what I mean? I mean, something that also like adding on to that campiness, maybe, but in a different way. I think this this is not quite the campiness that I'm used to, like Queen Card or Tomboy. I would say is. Some of the delivery for this is very interesting. Like the outfits, the wigs. Um, it reminded me a lot of Hook. So the dance crew that was on Street Woman Fighter, Ooh. the the main leader from them being Aiki. Um, they had this like wig theme for one of their performances. And it reminded me a lot of that. Like uh, some of the outfits also reminded me of like Hook, typical, like very like tomboyish type of look. Um which that was interesting. I don't know if Aiki had anything to do with this performance or this choreo. It but does feel it was like fun. an Aiki thing to it do. It feels dude, very right? Aiki. It yeah. really does. And I feel like Let that kind of social medias. <laughs> makes sense. Um, I just found it interesting that it was G Idol doing it. And also something that I noticed in it, and it bothered me at first because it threw me off. I felt like I wasn't seeing correctly, but they don't lip sync throughout the whole thing. Like this is just a performance video like they never uh, uh, like sometimes they match but throughout the whole song is not that consistent no 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 no. they they start lip syncing in the outro right right right. but but throughout the song like when you're watching them like head on right when they're right. like facing the camera doing the they choreography don't. they don't they don't right i i, th I th no, no uh -huh. keep going sorry keep going <laughs> no no i just found it very interesting because it it made me like do a double take where I was like, are they? Did they miss it? Like, is it off? I wasn't Anita, sure. Everything about G Idol is a choice. That's what I'm. No, 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 yeah. That. But I thought it was an it's interesting choice to do it that no, way. Yeah. They, they, they're doing some higher level concept thing, and they're trying to do weirder. Well, I wouldn't call it weirder. They're trying to do more. Um, I can interpret this here. Hear, hear me out, right? Okay, like, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Go, okay. Yeah, yeah. 
So they don't ambitious. They don't lip sync until they get to the mm-hmm. very end. And the, at that point, the lyrics are, "Wife, I make you feel so hot. I make you feel all. I make you feel like a lie." Um, or mm-hmm. actually, she says, "I make you feel like lie." Um, but I don't wanna. And my interpretation was that that is the only thing where they're being direct. And all the lyrics before that is the idealized image of what a wife should be in a traditional society. Mm. So, uh-huh. like, they don't mean any of that shit until they get to the very end where it's like, I, this is all a fucking lie. It's, it's, you're, mm-hmm. If you think my cream soup is going to taste good, F off. Um, that, like, that's, Oreo was fun, too. That was mm. pretty cool, yeah. Like, it's... There's a reason to do it. The output is pretty mm-hmm. cool. It looks fancy as a style. Like, hey, you know, I got... I, don't, I can't complain. I, you know what I mean? Like this. I feel like also this is appropriate, or at least to me. It felt it felt like a pre-release. Like, oh, I yeah. am intrigued. Like, where is this going? But I can tell this is not the main event. So, in that sense, I think it did its job. Mm-hmm. You know, that's a good point, because I feel like a lot of the pre-releases recently, especially the ones, because mm-hmm. they're, like, really popular in K-pop now, they they kind of feel yeah. like the main deal, just, like, shortened up or, like, you know, like, kind of dumbed down. Why wasn't this a title track? Yeah. Right, right. And this one is, like, this is, this is what you can also do, but it's not the K-pop thing you wanted, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. You know, at the end of the day, I have to, like, I do respect. Doyan's like use of English as a chainsaw, more or less. You know, <laughs> just a chainsaw. <laughs> like I don't know, but it works. Do you know what I mean? It's like it's attention grabbing. Yeah. It's meant to make people like be pissed off a little, mm. right? Like it's working. She she's a smart. She's a very smart person. Um, and I I, I think with this song. We run the way we comment on this, or at least I do, runs the risk of me f- coming off as like, you know, K-pop's not supposed to be serious all the time, right? Like that's that's the the line I have to balance in terms of how I mm. feel about a song like this. Um mm-hmm. Ah man, I these type like the 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 Soyeon music makes me think about my own inner feelings about K-pop more than anyone else. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like she breaks my own like um like the frame that I like to look at K-pop with, right? Mm. Uh, which I can, which you know, I can respect her for doing that because she's probably the only person who's doing. It. She's like really a maverick in that sense, where she's like going out there doing this crazy shit, whether it works or not. But she's committed to it, so I, I, I gotta give her her props for that. It's provocative. Um, it gets the people going. Yeah. And honestly, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, does this work as a pre-release? A hundred percent, because oh, now yes. I'm very curious about the main release. So. You could say what you want about wife and whether you understand what's going on, whether it's really meant to, to, to hammer home the messaging or it's just meant to be silly. I heard other people saying, I don't know if I, like how serious I'm supposed to take our messaging here. But at the end of the day, I'm so intrigued by the main release now. So it's doing its job. What's right? it going to be? Yeah. More um, dummy English. I Sign me up <laughs> if it's like this. <laughs> honestly yeah at this point I, I, I like i'm not gonna say i've come around to it because i haven't but like you know the the winter thaw is starting to melt a tiny bit look at you yeah. um, fortune awaits in 2024 bro i'm like <laughs> painting word pictures today um but um, oh, wow. <laughs> i'll give this a tingly because the vibes are good regardless of how yeah, i feel tingly. about some of the decisions oh mm-hmm. tingly as well yeah it's pretty cool very interesting stuff all right Let's move on to the debut of Pletus' new boy group, the follow-up to 17 to us with their debut plot twist. Number one, I want to say, Pletus, y'all got to put the English title of the songs in the music video, video like, titles, guys. Like, <laughs> r- come on, help help people. And you know who's struggling the most? All the reactors on, <laughs> on YouTube are having to just put, like, I'm reacting to uh, just the Korean title. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like the, the, for for as for SEO purposes, this is a struggle for people right now. This song. Um, Ooh. it's also like a really but, long Korean title too. Like that's a lot of yeah. Characters. They are long to long. us. Uh, their last song was the one we talked about two weeks ago. Oh my my seven S, which was more like a just like a, a, a an introduction to the group. I would say this is uh, mm-hmm. this is what we, the first release. It is a very short song. I hear like the runtime. Is like under three minutes on this one. Um, how do how do we feel about this? The English running title is plot twist as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess plot twist is a good English translation. The Korean title reads 
uh, first, the first time you meet does not go as planned. So, like, you know. That's the whole storyline. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, Honestly, I, that part where they kind of sing about that, where the, the first encounters are always so hard, is the best part of the song. Mm. Honestly, mm. That, that, that section mm. is really strong. I thought I was like, there's something kind of nostalgic about this sound. And there's yes. something that feels very classic K-pop boy group about this. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I kind of like this debut. But my issue is with more or less the higher decision making into like. I feel that this debut did a horrible job of introducing each one of the kids and their flavor to me. Okay. They all felt one flavor. Uh, let's start with the song. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, let's go with the song like, first. I yeah. yeah, yeah. I got I have really angry comments about the flavor. Oh jeez. <laughs> I mean like the song itself is pretty standard. Like you mentioned it's yeah, like yeah. good old boy group pop music. Um the, the I think the chorus is really strong. And I, I feel like yes. last couple of weeks and months we've had a lot of songs with like shitty choruses that repeat each other over and over and over again. Um, and this time, uh, yes, it's like a two-part chorus with like the second part being a dance, but the first part is still like it's pretty rhythmic, and I like how the the instrumental, um, the chords. There's a chord synth that plays uh, throughout mm -hmm. the throughout the throughout the chorus, and it stops and comes back to the rhythm of the top line, and that's that's pretty cool. It's pretty neat. Um, it's a simple trick, works really well. Um, but I mean, you know, it's it's still pretty fun, uh, and you know, the output is, you know, it's, if you like boy group songs, you'll probably like this kind it's, of song uh, too. Two minutes and thirty two second runtime. Mm, that's mm, it's a little short, sure. but that's fine, right? Mm -hmm. How'd you feel, Anita? Uh, no, kind of also feeling that sense of like nostalgia because I I was thinking about it, but it was very interesting that we were doing something. I don't know. It seems very age appropriate. <laughs> they're mm. just going to it school. Did. It did. Um, they they're very young, so it feels like it makes sense that they're doing that now because, like, I've always said this, but like, pushing a group that feels very young and they've just debuted right to, into something that seems very mature feels a little. I don't know. Like, you you are underutilizing the fact that like they're so young and like you, we should. Try to not have them act older than they are. You know, that's mm. that's my own opinion on that. No, so I, I like think. that they kind of remain in that that concept where like they're just going to school, and like we mentioned, like the title says, that's basically the storyline of the whole music video. Like going to school, like the first day of school, I think, and meeting people and awkward situations. Oh, first know, day of school fun. is hella awkward. It's so, so awkward. awkward. <laughs> it's so awkward. Like the, part, the part where he's waving at somebody and he thinks they're waving at him. Oh, bro. It was one I've been there. It's so embarrassing. Oh, bro. <laughs> you, 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 so, okay, I have something funny to say about that scene. At, mm. So that scene occurs at like 145 where they're in the room. It's just him and the other dude, his, uh, his seat buddy, right? And he's waving oh, okay. and the other guy's like, hi? Right? Like, or something <laughs> like that. Well, yeah, when, there's, there's when, that scene. Okay, but there's so, also another one. Oh, which one? It's they're in the hallway or something, and one of the members of the group, right? He mm. sees somebody waving towards, like, at, oh, towards that him, kind of scenario. And okay, he okay. waves back, and then it's the guy behind. It's it's I don't know. I felt I felt that because <laughs> I've been there. So the one of the scenes we saw was when he opened the the room to the classroom, right? And oh. it was all girls in the room. Oh. And he was clearly in the wrong room, right? Or right. something yes. like that. Right. Oh. So my head instantly went to, oh, they're going to hit like a cool romance angle, right? <laughs> the oh. next scene is him and his seat buddy. And I was like, hey, we doing a guy, a boy's love concept? <laughs> like, that was where my head went. And I was like, did they run out of female extras or something? But then I oh. realized that it's in Asia. So it could be a room, like a classroom of all guys and a classroom of all girls. You know what I mean? That's pretty common. Uh, there, yeah. yeah, but on first glance, I was like, I was doing a boys love concept all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> um, my overarching issue with this com with this debut, um, mm -hmm. is that I feel like I got very little individualism from the members. Mm. Okay, like all the vocalists sound the same to me. Same energy, same mm -hmm. vibe. Like it just felt like a uh, like a hive mind collective is what I got. 
Ooh, mm. a high mind collective. Interesting. <laughs> um, like, I can't well, point out any of the kids and be like, man, that kid's got something interesting. Like, the best way I could put it is, mm -hmm. whenever G Idol debuted and you heard Yugi sing, everyone was like, this girl, who is she? Right? Mm -hmm. Like, where so, does she come okay, from? Okay. Why is she so deep? Sorry. Yeah. I would say, um, I, I would agree. I feel like sometimes it's a good thing, sometimes it's a bad thing when you start to have, like, individual identities for each member, right? To make them more memorable, right? But I also see the other side of, like, trying to push them as a whole, right? As a group and not really single people out right away i would say that the song could have definitely or i don't i don't think it utilized each member in a way that was highlighted just musically right because mm. i do agree that it is a little hard to pick out like who's doing what section but i don't know maybe they're not really focused on that right now because they're just starting well i mean i th all i can say is that that also impacts the quality of the song as well because like it, it mm. a lot of this lack of character feels like a part of the choice in the mix and the post-production which is yeah, exactly exactly right, which yeah. sometimes is fine but on this at this point it feels processed to the point where like i it felt sterile to me that was one of the things mm. i was thinking yes yes I, this I, felt I'm like almost you. like ai k-pop sounding right like oh what should okay. K-pop vocalists sound like? And this is what it kind of came out as. Most mm. of the vocals in the song are not bad. It's, if anything, they're, you know, they're all, all of it's pretty solid. But at the moment, but up, it really felt like they were not taking risks to show off. Hey, like we're like somebody in here is the main vocalist. Uh, look at look at him go hit that high note or, or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm not saying every song needs to do that. But on the other hand, I, I would, you know. It's a song with vocals. I would like a moment where like, oh, that this guy's really good at singing. Um, and that that never really happened mm, for me. Okay. Um, so that's that's where I, I felt lacking about uh, of it a little bit. But at the same time, kind of going back to what you said earlier, Anita, I don't feel like that's what the song is trying to do. If anything, it's I feel like it's mostly banking on having like a very cute, very relatable, um, mm -hmm. very like almost like a shoujo I, manga kind of a. I read a video. comment that. People say this sounds like the guy version of G Friend. Oh, and I could like early G Friend. Mm. I could kind of feel the vibe. I could. I mean, I could like, see that class argument. beat era. Like, I could kind of get what they're trying to do here. I see the comparison. Um, yeah, I with, see especially that. with like school concept and theming. You know. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, I mean, yeah. Sometimes shoujo works. Uh, let's let's go and and see where it goes. You know what I mean? Um, I, I do prefer this over their previous uh, prologue track. I'm not going to oh, lie. Really? Yeah. As a song, it, feel, it feels yeah. better. Uh, it, it's more I would, interesting. I would kind of agree. You know? I, I think it's more interesting as well. Yeah. Mm. Like, I, I still, like, stand by my comments about the prologue track where, like, all I saw in the video, which was, you know, I, I have to admit, I'm, per I'm not to, to, I'm not super biased in favor of choreo focused music videos which what that was and the little bit of narrative was a bit of narrative that we get with every other k-pop group so um it this one feels a little more interesting you know um and if, if anything it was really cool i like the outro where they're like walking on a bridge and it's like sunset mm -hmm. it's got a nice instrumental there's like a, a rainbow subway. yeah it was like a really cool shot and i was like that's mm. that's pretty dope like stuff like that really helped you know very wholesome yeah very mm. wholesome v again very big high school anime romance shoujo vibes that's i mean that's good i think oh, I, I can't yeah. think of like off the top of my head other groups that are doing that so i think it works yeah yeah i agree i i wouldn't say they hit a home run with this but mm. if they're gonna stick with this kind of concept like i could see them doing this for a while right that type of thing um, I would like to. I would like them to in the next release though. To my main as I, man, I, I was coming into this being very angry, but you guys kind of talked me off of a, off the. We mellowed like, you down. Off of the the, the, the <laughs> side of the building, you know. You got to talk me out of that. Um, what I would like for them in the upcoming track is to show off some of the members' individual talents a little. Mm. More. That's the the real sticking that would point be the for next me. Step. Is that it? Mm. Just kind of felt like they all just kind of sound the same. Mm. Um, that's a bit of a shame because clearly these kids are pretty good, but I don't think yeah. the song allowed them to really show off how actually talented they are. Um, well, how unique they are. We shall see. I give it a tingly. 
tingly. I'll give it a tingly. That's fun. Um, all right. Big new releases um from this week also include Hui solo debut uh yeah, with Mbop. We had Ihai with my beloved. We had a group called I'm gonna call them DX Mon. It sounds like a Pokemon. I don't know. Um Go Pokemon. With, with Spark. We had Groovy Room. So it's uh, he 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 made a producer track. Yes or no featuring Ho Yun Jin from La Seraphim. Then we had La Seraphim released all night with Sweetie, which was basically like what would you call it, Warren? A remake? It's a remake. Yeah. Yeah, it's a remake a of, of a Kano pop song, right? It's a random K pop sorry, American pop song from twenty thirteen, I think, or fourteen. I yeah. Know. We have Haiki with Thinking About You, which is like a project song. They are on this new H one Kino project. Yeah. We had Cat Retriever. Um no cat. Catriever? Catriever. Catriever. They had a debut with Sunflower. This is the Thunder and Mimi We're Getting Married uh, couple unit. Oh. <laughs> That's what this is right there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. We had AB6 with Grav Me. We had Even with Ugly. And then we had Super Junior LSS with Suit Up. Man, that's one of the subunits you don't see too often, right? The Shindong, no. she won an e took unit. Um, I, th I think that might be their like official debut, technically. It must have yeah, been because I've never seen one. this this acronym before. So, mm -hmm. pretty sure this is a debut. Real, real all right, quick. Spice King. Oh, what were about Ive all night featuring Sawidi? Yeah, uh, I did listen to it real quick because we almost covered it. It was like the fourth. It was kind of. It was underwhelming. It was like. The most low effort American debut I've seen, and I've seen the Itzy debut oh, too, no. so I don't know what to tell you. Um, it felt maybe they were testing the market out and, and see how it goes, but like, it was, it was like very well made. Like, nobody has solo parts except for like the featuring artists. Yeah, they all, Anita, the entire time, they're all singing mm. together. It makes no sense, huh? It's like they first. huddled around the microphone and they're like, all right, we're all gonna sing. Let's go. Huh. Yeah, it was like if if he ended up covering this, like this would this would have been the blandest song I've heard like in in the month. Like I don't know what to tell you. Uh, Interesting yeah. choices then. We'll see what happens with Ive in America, because it seems like they're trying to come to America. Land of the free and opportunity. Bald Eagle. Spice King. <laughs> okay, uh last week, episode two sixty five. And McStash, I wanna dash, I wanna run it, run it. Picked up two crowns. They are eligible for the Hall of Spice this week, guys. Second place was Rise Ooh. Love 119. Third place was Yena Good Morning. New candidates are the three songs we covered this week. Sister 19, No More My Boy, G Ida Wife, uh, To Us Plot Twist. My chart. Yeah, gotta mm -hmm. put N McStash in first place again, guys. Yeah, gotta. Nice. You have yeah, to. You gotta. absolutely have to. Second place, I'm gonna put. To us, plot twist. Mm. Oh, that's a plot Wait, twist. That's I a plot really, twist. no, no. I really like the chorus, like the the first okay. part of the chorus. It won I, you over. Yeah, it won me over. Mm. And then third place this week, I will put. Ah, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I will put. Yeah, I'll give it to G Idol. G Idol will come okay. in third this week. Okay. 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 For the yeah. vibes. Yeah. Okay. How about? I'm very surprised. TWS made it. Um, but I'm happy for that. Um, I'll start off with my number one, too. I also have Nmix Dash in yes. first place. Um, still very impressed with the vocal performance. I thought it was it's a very, very interesting song. And I think the, the vocals really sh shine in this one. Nmix got it, something cooking right now. Yeah. I really do. So, keep it in first. Second place, moving up one spot, actually, is Rise. Love Ooh. 119. Ooh. Um, I don't know. Same same deal. I feel like I've I've also grown into this one. Like I haven't really I didn't quite understand the chorus. I still don't quite understand it, but I can overlook it for the other sections. <laughs> and I think the whole packaging was very interesting, very much nostalgic um so that was nice third place i'm also gonna give it to g idol wife 
I find it so interesting what's going on right now. That's a pre-release. I thought it was a, a very right interest interest peaking performance. Um, with yeah, a lot of the buddy. choices in the outfits, the choreography, the styling, the uh, yeah. the videography, like the lip syncing or not lip syncing. I thought that was very interesting. So I'll put it in third. Okay, um, dash and mix. Mm-hmm. The talk of the town, the redemption mm-hmm. arc of the era. Um, I, I'm like kind of pissed off. Like I didn't know oh. that Bay is this good of a vocalist until now. The more right? I listen, this is the rediscovery of Bay. Man, I thought she was the funny kid. Like that's <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> like clearly she is an underutilized vocalist. Um, and she fits this genre so well. Um, the way she like inflects her vocals in like the second part of like the mm-hmm. first verse. <sighs> shit man like sh- <laughs> I, I love how husky our voice is great um second place for dash which Whoa, means second? love 119 Whoa. by rise is oh first my. place for me Whoa. oh my god oh. wow <laughs> i really like the song i'm not gonna lie um hey prop, you man. really really do i do, yeah, holy I do. Shit. what are you gonna do fight me fuck off no. i mean <laughs> people try to fight us in the comment sections dude, all the time like <laughs> I'm trying to throw hands. I, I, I like I I think I've come around to the chorus. And I, if anything, I think it's really appropriate mm-hmm. now. And, and if anything, I think it's one of the best utilizations of like the SM we're gonna chant chorus. You know what I mean? Like they they've done that a million oh. times. And I think this is one of the better versions of it. Especially mm-hmm. because it's a huge contrast with the rest of the song and the instrumental. Um and that's that's a big gap. That's always really cool. Um and, and, and that, if anything, makes it a little softer to listen to rather than having a grading instrumental and a grading rap as a, as a chorus. So, um, I have, I, 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 I retract my complaints. This is a great song, um, and one of my favorite boy group songs of the year. Um, which so I know fly. is not a high, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna place uh, Wife by G Idol on third for me. Um, I, 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 I like did. the concept. You all did. I like the execution. I, I think they did a good job. Uh, I like the outcome. And if anything, you know, I, I like the stupid English. So what are you going to do? I think they're owning it. It's great. Okay. So just talk Nation and Gochu Gang. They're, they have spoken. Um, in first place with 251 points and mixed dash. That's a lot of points. Second place with less than half of that, 123 is Rise, Love 119. Hey, 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 let's go. And in third place with 90 points, they just beat out uh, To Us. To Us had 89, but Sistar 19 has 90 points, so they come in third place, Ooh. get one point over Ooh, there. Interesting. Close. As a result, third place is a tie this week between oh. G-Idol Wife mm-hmm. and To Us uh, Plot Twist. Oh, wow. Second place, they both have three points. Second place with 11 mm-hmm. points is Rise Love 119. Hey. And in mm-hmm. first place, picking up their third crown, entering the Hall of Spice class of 2024 is Enmix Dash. Let's nice. go. Let's that go. is their second time entering the Hall of Spice. Yeah, they entered it with Sonya Breaker as well. Oh my God. Shout out to Pretty, pretty soon. Yeah, one after the other. All right. Finally, we're at show winners. Anita, hit us with. Yes, we have a couple here. First off, Taeyeon with 2X. She won in Show Music Core, so that brings it up to two total wins for her. Then we got Rice with Love 119. They won on M Countdown and Inkigayo, so two wins for them as well. And then last but not least, we have Itzy with Untouchable. They won at Music Bank, so congrats to them. Nice. All right. Um, by the way, that is uh, Nmix Dash is the first song to enter the class of 2024. So they are the first entry. Ooh, oh, wow. Yes. Very nice. All right. Uh, that ends part one of Soji Talk episode 266. We'll be back with some spicy news and events from the past week. We'll see you guys then. Three, two, one. <laughs> Talk Nation, this is Anita here with a quick PSA. If you would like to support Soju Talk K-pop podcast, please like, subscribe, or follow us on whatever platform you're using. 
and consider joining our Patreon at patreon.com slash sojutop or donating to us at paypal.me slash sojutop. On behalf of the crew and myself, thank you. Now back to our regularly scheduled episode. All right, we are back at it with part two of Soldier Talk episode 266. We're going to talk about some news and events from the past week. Not too much news. We have a lot of like lawsuits and tours <laughs> were announced. Ooh. But we got a couple news articles here. First one, the big one that happened. Hyuna reveals that she is dating former Highlight member Jun Hyung. Uh, On face value, hmm. people were like, oh, Hyuna's dating someone. Wait, it's not done? What? I thought they got back together. And then everyone goes, wait, that name sounds familiar. Um, So if you don't know, uh, this guy, Jun Hyung, was investigated in in conjunction with the whole, like, Jun Jun Hyung chat rooms, Mocha Mm -hmm. chat rooms, and the whole Burning Sun thing was kind of, kind of accessorily involved in that, too, like... He was involved in that all in all that BS. Um, Warren, what what was the what was the legal decision at the end regarding him? Oh, the legal decision. Remember. Yeah. Um, How in what in what capacity was he involved? So, uh, don't don't quote me on this because I'm going off of Namu Wiki over here, which you know Namu Wiki. Um, the final outcome was that he received a video from Jung Jun Young in a one on one chat. Uh, not a, this was he was in the group chat, but apparently the group chat he was on was fine. Um, but apparently he received a video on a one-on-one chat in Kakao Talk uh, for a video which the girl consented to filming, but did not consent to sharing. Um, regard, it's just not a good look. Not a good look. So people are very yeah. pissed at Hyuna in general, right? Um, People are disappointed in her. People are like, this guy, oh my god, like, what the f? Um, honestly, all fair reactions. Um, this is a really terrible situation. Like, this is not yeah. a good look. Um, yeah. Um, I mean, I mean, to be, I feel like maybe the perception might be different depending on like, where you're hearing the news, right? And like what the translations are saying. But it seems that. He officially didn't get filed for any charges, I believe, right? No, he but was he just had to investigated. But he had to come forward and admit mm. his involvement in like in what capacity. Yeah. I think my like personal right judgment is like if you have friends like that, if they feel comfortable sending you that information, it's telling. that's a little it's telling, right? That's a little red flag for me personally, but I don't know. So yeah, Hyuna's being dragged across the internet, which you know, uh, it is what it is. Um, th- is that a surprise? Let's be honest here. Like, yeah. um, not a great look. Um, yeah, uh, people are very confused about her decision making, especially, especially for Hyuna. Some- Hyuna, right? Okay, yeah. well, if we if we think about Hyuna as a person in the K-pop sphere, right? Mm-hmm. I don't think she ever wanted to be considered a, a like. I don't. I don't know if she ever wanted to have the reputation she had, but her reputation. As far as I know, is she someone in the industry who people were like, man, certain companies tried to sexualize her image really early on, like back at the bubble pop era, things like that, right? And mm-hmm. she's that. someone who was resilient and someone who uh, empowered herself through that type of situation and things like that. And people always felt bad about her for being put in these type of concepts back in the day. And so people look at her as someone like somewhat of an icon in the industry of someone with perseverance, someone who's there for female empowerment, things like that, right? I don't know if she even wants that type of title, but that's the type, like that's the vibe that she kind of gives off, right? In the, the industry. The what exactly happened, and this was like even before uh Bubble Pop, around the age of, I don't know, fucking 14 or some shit. Um th- somebody filmed, somebody filmed um her performing um as a part of four minute. And it became viral mm-hmm. uh, because people started saying she has the hockey of the conqueror, which is a one piece one piece mm-hmm. meme for a really strong power. 
Um, and because of the way it sounds in Korean, it was a roundabout way of saying she was incredibly sexy. But at the same time, she's fucking 14. Exactly. So you see mm. where the issue is. Um, mm-hmm. And then, then she went solo with Change and, and Bubble Pop. And Bubble Pop was when she was an adult. And that's where they really started going ham on that shit. Um, and the- people started to say, like, there's a real big disconnect between the type of music she's releasing and the type of behind-the-scenes content we're getting with Hyuna. Right? That was another thing people were really pointing at. Um, yeah. Um, so it's all that's all involved in this. So, but that, that, that's the type of image she has. Um, and for her to date someone like this, people were like, "Holy shit!" Right? What kind like, of a look is it? Yeah, you know. And then I saw other people pointing at the fact that this Junhyung guy used to date Guhara, who was kind of, um, I don't know in what capacity, but I had heard that she had kind of helped police in the Burning Sun era with some information as sort of an informant because she knew a lot of the people involved in that um so and yeah and Hyuna was also friends with Guhara um back then so that's all involved in this it's 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 complex situation and it doesn't look good yeah I don't want to say too much else but it is what it is yeah um yikes right (laughs) yikes Uh, yeah to put it lightly yeah, let's move on, guys. Oh. I don't want to say anything else. Uh, all right, next one. We got we got we got we got some spice here. No article, but a public disclosure filed yesterday. So this was during the week. Um, revealed that Lee Sung Soo, also known as Chris Lee, oh. sold his remaining stake in SM Entertainment. He now has zero percent ownership in the company. <laughs> what? What is this? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, so if, you out. Guys, if you guys remember back when <sighs> Kakao and Hybe were fighting over the stake of SM Entertainment, right? Mm-hmm. Chris Lee, who is Isuman's nephew, was the main guy on the Kakao side, right? That was, that was in SM. It, it, it even basically spun it as Isuman versus his nephew, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and the Kakao side ended up winning at the end after they negotiated with Hybe. But no one really won in the end. And now this guy, after doing all of that, and people are like, he betrayed his uncle, gave him the opportunity in the industry anyway, yada, yada, yada. Less than half a year later, man has zero percentage ownership in the company. (laughs) I hope, I really hope that Chris Lee got a massive payout from Kakao before he left, you know? But who knows? They might have just screwed him over and used him as a puppet. I mean, okay. For all intents and purposes, he is still a part of SM. Yeah, yeah. He, he hasn't left SM yet, um, but he cashed out. <laughs> he has no ownership in the company anymore. They could just fire him, like straight up. He's he's just another man who works at the company. He's got a desk, he's got a title, um, and a lot of cash in his account. Um, Isn't this crazy though? <laughs> that he, like, so no one in their family owns any of SM anymore. Like, they, they've lost all of it. <laughs> it's just kind of funny yeah. at this point. <laughs> I, I don't know. Man. Oh, it just man. seems like what the F just happened there. Um, all right, let's keep going. Next one. Ives Jang, uh, Jang Won Young has partially won a lawsuit for damages against YouTuber Sojang for 100 million won. So about $75,000 USD. Oh, boy. Uh, Sojang was known to share misinformation mm-hmm. and rumors about Won Young through their YouTube channel. There is a separate oh. lawsuit with regard to any defamation claims between Starship slash Won Young versus Sojang as well. So, on an individual level, it seems that Won Young has won a lawsuit saying that this Sojong lady was saying all this bullshit, or man or female, I don't know who, 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 who were there. But they were, uh, mm-hmm. this YouTube channel was saying a bunch of shit about me that wasn't true, spreading misinformation, and Won Young has won on that stand. Um, additionally, okay. now, Starship mm-hmm. is also involved in another lawsuit with Won Young, because she's in Starship, obviously, where oh. they're like, yeah, they were defaming our artists, so we're suing for that. Um... As a, as a part of the lawsuit, uh, now all the information about the Sojang person is live. It's on. Oh, God. It's publicized. Um, if you look it up, you'll find it. Um, I don't, I'm not gonna do that here. Yeah, you you can dig that up on your own. Um, but it's just it's just really funny. I, why do this? Come on, man. Like, there's one thing when you want to sensationalize the news and like make a big deal out of news articles, but there's a completely other thing. It's spreading misinformation and rumors and just making them up. It's lies. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, 
if something happens and there's a news article, you could hoot and holler and make a big like, oh my god, can you believe this news article happened? It's a totally other thing to just make it up yourself, right? It's it's like, just literal fake yeah. news. It's just fake yeah. news. It's not misinformation. It's not a rumor. It's just they were doing running a fake news channel. Like hey, seventy five k is a lot of money too, right? Like good That's luck, good luck. Get out, yeah. Get out of off. here. I, I okay. Oh. Honestly, I hope this is the start of all like the fake news channels in Korea, like taking the shit. Like, like there's too many of these, like K-pop or not. Like, there's a there's a couple channels in Korea that are like really popular for like spreading fake news about about Korean soccer players. Like one week mm. they'll be like, oh, Son Heung Min's about to get fired, and then the week after it's like, everyone wants Sonny. They're gonna take him to a uh, uh, fucking uh, Bayern. You know, like it's it's a. The Korean fake news scene is fucking wildly rampant at the moment. Um, I got another court yeah. case here. Oh, boy. Seoul Central District Court has sentenced a 59-year-old woman for stalking a pink member Jung Won Ji since 2020. She was oh ordered to pay a fine of 100,000 won, so literally 100 bucks, undergo probation for two years, perform 120 hours of community service, and take 40 hours of stalking crime uh, recidivism prevention classes. Hey, what the fuck? That's it. That's a very light fine, dude. That's like not even a hundred bucks. A little under, yeah. Dude, that like a parking fine is more than that these days. A speeding ticket is more. Than, yeah, what the fuck? I have a question, Warren. Um, isn't it true that Korea soon is going to uh, release the um identities of people who are under trial during cases? Uh, Pretty sure they changed that, right? Uh, I, I read that somewhere. Sure. I don't know. I don't know if I'm completely right with that, but I'm pretty sure in the last like month or so, I read that they changed the law because previously Korea is extremely conservative on protecting the identities of people involved in lawsuits. Uh, I I, I can't mm. confirm or deny whether this is true, but I can confirm that we have been shifting away from being so protective of the the you know culprit or criminal, whatever you want to say. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. But this is crazy. Don't don't be a stalker, y'all. Fifty nine year old woman. No. That's that could be someone's like mom who's stalking her. Yeah. That could be someone's aunt auntie, dude. Why? Just I, why? I, I, why? Like, how do you have the time to do this? Yeah. That's and true. also imagine Jogunji, like whenever you walk from your dorm to like the convenience store, there's like a creepy old woman following you. Oh, <laughs> imagine yeah. that. Yikes. Oh man. That would be insane. Um. Yeah. Get out. All right, let's keep going. Okay, this one I just had to throw in, right? There's a K-pop slash... There's a trot slash K-pop group. They do both, right? It's called Mini Money. Their subunit, Mini Money M, their album had only one copy uh, sold in the first week. Oh. Oh. Well. <laughs> I just wanted to include that because I thought that was wild. Okay. Uh. Maybe they will gain more support. Yeah, of course, after of these course. articles came out. But okay, yeah. okay, okay. Hear me out. Hear me out. This is not the kind of group that relies on first week sales. This is a trot group. The leader was in Trot Singer mm. 3. Oh, sorry, Miss Trot ah. 3. This is gonna be heavily popular. And um in uh in a uh in the uh, cucumber convention somewhere in Kangwon though. You know what I mean? It's <laughs> it's 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 one of those. <laughs> but what uh, that means their families didn't buy albums, dude. <laughs> Their, their company didn't buy a couple albums. It's, it's fine. Yeah, it's, they're being honest about it. Mm. <laughs> Dude, wait, this is horrendous though. Yo, shout I just saw this and I just saw this and I thought it was like I don't want to say it's hilarious, but it was kind of interesting. Shout out to Mini Money's one fan who purchased one album. Right, right. Okay, <laughs> uh, let's keep going. All right, the big one, guys. Mm -hmm. IU. H -E I don't know if we're calling the H E R tour World Tour or we're gonna call it the Her World Tour. Let's call it her. I use her World Tour concert, dude. Let's go. I U. Happening. The only other time she's performed into the United States is KCON 2014 or something. Holy um, shit! That's a all ago. So she's gonna be in in Seoul, Yokohama, Taipei, Singapore, Jakarta, Hong Kong, Manila, Kuala Lumpur, London, Berlin, Bangkok, Osaka, Newark, Atlanta, Washington D.C., Rosemont, Oakland, Los Angeles. Oh, Boom. Man. And she's also there blonde right now. <gasps> wow. So, uh... This is going to be one of the hardest tickets to ever get, right? <laughs> Are we going? Yeah, we're trying, dude. I'm going to try to buy two tickets regardless of who can come <laughs> with me. Is that a question? 
I have like so many friend groups that are like, we're going, right? I'm like, I think I'm well, going here's, three here's, times. Here's now. the issue with this China. Okay, so we would go to the uh, the Newark one, obviously, right? Because there's no yes. New York City. Yes. It's at Prudential. Prudential is small. Like, it's not like MetLife. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, like, every time I say IU, yo, all are, are like, IU is not super popular in the West. So No, she is. She is. <laughs> For this, I feel for like this, going to every sell K-pop out. person's gonna try to come. All the ca- like, you're you don't even have to be out. a gigantic IU specific fan. People like IU in general, you know. Mm. Mm. Like for instance, Prudential Center holds like sixteen thousand in its concert um, setting, right? And mm. like Met Life concert seats, um, yeah, it could hold like eighty thousand. So like. BTS was not too hard to get for me when I tried to get them and I got them during uh, pre-pandemic, right? But Mm -hmm. this IU is going to be like a war, I think, to get these tickets. I think it's going to be so hard to get these tickets. But it's worth it. It's worth it. Maybe we go to like a different location. What's the closest? Where else would you go? DC. DC. Do you want to go to DC, Doug? Maybe, maybe, maybe District of Columbia. I'm gonna try to get these tickets, fam. We'll right. see what happens. All right. We'll try. We'll try. We'll look, we're going to try. This is what we'll do. I'll buy two tickets because I'm going to get them. You know, trust. Trust. I got this. <laughs> uh, I'm going to get two tickets and then I'm going to have everyone else who wants to come with me. I'm going to put you in a chat room and y'all can bid on the ticket. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? It's gonna be like Warren. Wait, you're not going to give it to me? What the fuck? It's going to be Warren, <laughs> my friends, my mom, my sister. Y'all can bid. <laughs> whoever, whoever bids the highest. <laughs> Dang, that's cool. Also, that's cold. if you get these tickets, the flip is going to be insane. Is it not? It'll be his highway robbery, right? It's going to be like, I bet you, like, let's say I get the tickets 250 a pop. I bet you could resell for 1000 No problem. <gasps> but you but you wouldn't. <sighs> I right? wouldn't if I got it, though. But then you want us to bet on it. We're going to fucking bet <laughs> on it. <laughs> hey, so you talk nation. You want to bet on the ticket, too? <laughs> Dang. <laughs> Oh, dude. But yeah. I'm going to try to get it. There's, I don't think there's info yet on the ticketing for the U.S. dates yet. Um, Let me look at her Twitter real quick. But uh, this is this is going to be really difficult to get tickets, I, I would assume, right? Uh, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. I would like to go, but we'll see what happens. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. When is it? July? July 18th or something like that. It's a Monday. Right? I don't have work on Monday. Nice. Okay. <laughs> oh, shit. Wait. It overlaps with the show. What are we going to do? <laughs> go to IU, dude. Live like, stream. come on, dude. It's <laughs> not even a question. We're going to IU. What is this? <laughs> All right. So that's that one. Um, Next thing. AT's La Seraphim and The Rose will be performing at Coachella 2024. Hey. Ooh. Ooh. They're all on the second line, too. Like, AT's that. day one. Ding, ding. Lana Del Rey headliner. Uh-huh. Uh, day two, Tyler the Creator, La Seraphim on first line. Nice, nice. Day three, Doja Cat headliner with the Rose is the the last one on the first line. If you look Ooh. at the uh, second line for Saturday, La Seraphim is sitting right next to John Batiste, which makes me think that we're gonna get a live rendition of his guitar solo. Oh, that, that could probably happen. Oh. Yeah, happen. We're um, gonna get La Seraphim Ice Spice remix, guys. <laughs> that boy, is that a lie? Really? <laughs> That's gonna happen. Come on, it has to happen. And then was... we're gonna get Little Yachty with the rose on day three, guys. <laughs> That's no. what we're gonna get. You know what I really need? I need a Ice Spice La Seraphim John Batista and a Hatsune Miku collab. If you look on line three on Saturday, like Hatsune Miku's okay, there. Okay. Hatsune Miku. <laughs> let me cook some. Let me cook something up. A lot of Del Rey, Lil Uzi Vert, and ATs. <laughs> <laughs> and you a Sobe. And you a Sobe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I throw them in there too. That's what we're going to get on day, day oh. one. Um, people were saying in general, though, this is like the amount of people invited this year is like uh, a third less than last year. Yeah. That was really? the main thing people were pointing out. I mean, I personally like a lot of the artists I like are on the list here, like Late Night Drive Home and stuff like that. But um, do I think it's a strong lineup? I don't think so. Yeah, so people were pointing that <laughs> like, out. Like, Lana's um, always great, but... Headline, headliner? I don't know. Next thing. P1 Harmony at the Governor's Ball 2024? Ooh. Okay. Ooh. I don't know which day. I didn't look at this. Um, this. Uh, oh, here. They, right there. Oh, someone put an emoji. 
Thank you to whoever made the whoever made it. the Killers Twenty One Savage and P One Harmony collab, guys. That's what we're getting <laughs> on day two of the of the Governor's Ball. <laughs> they could sing Mr. Brightside together, <laughs> like something like that. Um, yeah. Hey, I don't know how they pulled that off, but they got on this. So yeah, nice. there you go. Okay, so that happened there. Um, also, Twice is going to have another singular concert date in Las Vegas, right? Oh. At the Allegiant Stadium, which is where the Oakland, well, formerly Oakland Raiders, LA Raiders, no, Las Vegas Raiders play football. So it's a football stadium. It's a massive mm. concert. Twice is going to be doing um, one show in Las Vegas, and Vicha is going to be the opening act. Oh, that's nice. Interesting. Right? I like that. I guess like twice is at the, the the level now where they just pick and choose one time events, right? Like they did L- mm. like Los Angeles last year. They're like, we're just doing LA concert and then we'll come back and do it again. Oh, I mean it's but, twice, of course. You know what yeah, they should so have done? Cool. They should have performed at the uh, not not the, not at the stadium, but at the sphere. Do you know what that is? Oh, the yeah, but the sphere doesn't thing? hold too many people. Yeah, but it's just think. it's just kind of st- stupid and it's kind of fun. You know what also sucks? They really <laughs> could have said special in- special opening acts and mix and Vicha. That's what they really should be doing. Yeah, but Vicha's here. True. Fair, fair, fair. fair. And mix is like a lot of people more flying. They could throw them a bone, you know? <laughs> I'm sure and mix will get there in a moment. We're having a redemption Eventually. arc. Mm. All right. Crazy concert. Right? In Ooh. LA. Super crazy. February concert. 9th and 10th. Day one, CL, G Idol, The Kid Leroy, what? Espa, no? The Boys, Zero Base One. <laughs> Wait, the white Wait, the boy? The Kid Leroy? The white kid? Yeah, yeah the Kid the Leroy. Kid Come on. You know K-pop artist, The Kid Leroy? Um, <laughs> K-pop? Oh, you K-pop, all right. Day two, Taeyang, it's Lav, Lav, I, I, I never, oh I never pronounced these names Lauv? right. Lav, 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 Espa. G Idol, The Boys, AB6, Zero Base One again. Yo, are, double <laughs> Zero Base One. What are these random American boys just sitting in between all these people? <laughs> I mean, it's in LA. It's in LA, right? right so, right. um, um, Espa, two days. Zero Base One, two days. The Boys, two days. That's that's pretty cool. G Idol, two days. Oh, G Idol, too, mm-hmm. yeah. Actually, it's, so it's most basically of, mostly the same lineup. Except basically, for day CL. one, do you like CL and the Kid Leroy? And day two, do you like Taeyang and. AB6. AB6. And now, mm. yeah. Hmm. Hey, this would be pretty fun to go. Which day would you go? Day, day, day two, right? Day two has more <gasps> people. I want to see CL. I want to see Taeyong, though. Same. I've Taeyang seen him already. I'll see him again. He was great. Yeah. All right. Well, that's happening there. Um, Next, Warren, this is in New York City. Oh, so, boy. Dive Studios. In partnership with Samsung. With the Samsung Galaxy, they're going to be doing the Samsung Galaxy Experience, located at 50th West 34th Street in New York City, right? It's going to be from um, January to February. Ooh. Every week, they're going to have some kind of like meet and greet thing, right? Oh. You can see Pinyel from B2B and BM from Card on January 20th. You can see Nancy and Alexa on January 27th. You can meet Mark Twan on February 10th. And I'm going to assume this one with the question marks is probably Eric Nam. That would be my guess. He's right? missing on the scene. Yeah. Wouldn't one think, right? <laughs> That's probably Eric Baum. Mm. Um, hey, if you're local in New York, be in greets, I yeah. guess. Yeah. The Galaxy Experience Space? Is that what it's called? I just yep. thought it's a Samsung store. Um, it's, <laughs> it's literally in the middle of K-Town. It's just there. It's like a huge space. Uh, Ooh. next to a little park in K Town, and like PH One already did a meet, meet and greet uh, a couple months ago, um, oh. and you know it was wildly popular. And I was like, why does this exist here? Like, it's <laughs> like nobody's coming to K Town to buy phones. Um, but maybe mm. maybe this is why <laughs> to do more of these. Space. Yeah, mm. it'd be pretty fun if you're a fan of any of these people, All right? Yeah. Um. Finally, we got a spoiler alert, guys. Spoil- look, I ah, set up the image already. Look at me. Spoiler for what? <laughs> Universe ticket. Oh, okay. Oh. So mm-hmm. you got five, four, three, a two, one. Okay, I'm moving. This is the final lineup for Universe ticket. Ooh. The group is called Eunice, I think. But there's a mm-hmm. petition because there's a girl in Daya whose name was Eunice. So there's a petition to change the name already. Oh, boy. But <laughs> oh, really? here's the members. There's a big age gap between some of these. We have Alisa oh, from the Philippines, born 2009. Yuna from Korea, 2009. Nana from Japan, 2007. 
I don't want to butcher this girl's name. Gali Tanka. I think it's from a, Philippines. I think it's a J Lee, not a Gay Lee. Gay Lee. Okay. Gay Lee. Yeah. Uh, from the Philippines, 2007. So one from Korea, 2011. There's a 2011, guys. <sighs> we have uh, That's young. Yuna from Korea, 2009. We have Kotoko, 2007, and we have Jin Hyunju, who is 2001, and I believe she's one of the girls in Signature. This girl, Belle. Oh. Yes, All right. I've seen her before. But that is the lineup. There is a massive age gap of over 10 years between some of these people. 10 years, um, exactly, yeah. Um, just for to uh, unconfirm what you said, uh, Jin Hyun Joo. Yes, I have it right Belle. here. I already knew the answer, dude. Oh, okay. You lied to me. <laughs> so C9 Entertainment is sharing notice of signature for future activities. Belle, also known as Jin Hyun Joo, will be making her debut with Eunice from SBS's Universe uh, ticket, and they will promote for two and a half years. As a part of Bell's debut and broadcast agreement, Signature will reorganize into a six-member girl group for the time being. Oh, okay. Mm. So she will this. not promote she simultaneously. Won't. She is no. She's just this. Ah. I mean, two point five years is pretty long. So I saw some sense. funny content with Signature over the last week. Um, what you see? What you see? If the y'all Brian? know, fly to the sky, Brian Jew. I right? love that web series. <laughs> There's a oh web my god. Series. Okay, so he's like, I a, hate like a he's like a Gen One SM person, right? Um, yes. He has a show where he goes and like examines people cleaning, in the Korean sphere, their houses. Yeah, right? cleaning and, freak Brian. And he's a clean freak expert, Brian. He went to Signature's dorm. It was so funny. He was it just was shitting on them. He's like, oh my god, duro un gichi be. <laughs> but yeah, they, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta so look good. up Brian Ju's cleaning show. It is so funny. NCT it's was hilarious. on an episode like two weeks ago. So. There's yes. out in the sun. <laughs> yeah. <There's, laughs> yeah, there was like little bug um eggs in the in the rice. There's out in the sun. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great show, dude. It's so funny. Oh. Um, is it pretty viral right now, Warren? It's dude. It's yes. the most popular show on YouTube at the moment. He's everywhere now. He's been in a lot of other. Yeah, he came out on stuff. a Doremi Market as well. I saw him there. He was mm. he was acting a fool. Good at for the him. Mm. He deserves his credit because Fly to the Sky kind of the, like he said like he got paid like nothing for being in that yeah. group more or less, and he's just hustled the rest of the way since then. Um, but he's doing well now. That's so cool. Shout out to Brian Jim. Brian's a great vocalist. He's, He's always been funny too. Mm. Mm. Um, yes. <laughs> all right, that is all the news this week. In terms of the. The people coming back next week, Uju Sonyo, Sora, is having a solo debut. Monster mm-hmm. X, I am, CIX, IU, Kim Jae Hwan. There's a group called Pow, uh, Weekly, G Idol. Nice. Is that nice, nice. the IU track where they swapped out the title? I think so. Yeah, okay. The um, interesting thing is, once IU came back, the amount the comebacks decreased significantly because everyone's avoiding. <laughs> she arguably the uh, strongest power in K-pop. So, yeah. So IU and G Idol should be pretty fun. Okay. All right, uh, that ends the normal show for Soldier Talk episode two sixty six. After the break, we'll be doing a twenty fifteen K-pop song World Cup. It should be a lot of fun if you're an old head like we are. Um, we'll see you guys then. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Here's an extra special shout out to all of our Fiesta Patreons on Patreon.com. Bagel, Charles, Cotton Ball, Del Manic, Ellie, Irv Tron, Gogu Mama, Honey Pools, Liam's Games and Toys, Luke Daniels, NJ Parks, Tear. You sue me. And thank you for joining Soldier Talk, your weekly shot of K pop. And special thanks to our Discord server mods Jacob, K Music Air Day, Koala, Max, No Bias. Tuggles and Wolf 297.
All right. After show, state of the nation, whatever. What are we doing, Warren? I. It's uh year 2015. Uh, what did you guys do in 2015? What What was that year like? I graduated high school. Shit, I came to college. I met you two fuckers. Same. Yeah. I I, I will in college. the first half of 2023. I was in a gap year. 2015, you mean? Yeah. 2015. Mm-hmm. I was in a gap year between. So I graduated in 2014 with the, the biology degree. I was in my mm-hmm. gap year. I didn't know what to do, so I applied to the public health schools, and I was intern. I was interning. At a mm-hmm. at like a environmental thing, but they kind of scammed me, so they ended up making oh, no. me canvas for the entirety of my internship, <laughs> which sucked ass. So at a certain point, I just stopped canvassing and I just wrote like made up the, the results of the canvassing. Oh. <laughs> I got chased by a lady with a cane at one point. I was like, I'm done, bro. With this. <laughs> oh my god! She said, "Not in our neighborhood," and she chased me with a cane. Damn. I was like, yeah. Oh my god! Yeah. That happened. Well, um, and then in the second half, uh, I I went to. Wait, well, I, I met you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I didn't think we'd still be talking all these years later, but look at us now. Look Why at us not? <laughs> oh, I fucking know. <laughs> twenty fifteen. I was a uh, a young twenty three. Oh, oh my god! I was a ripe fucking uh eighteen, I think. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, right. Hot minute. Wait, I was. You were like 18. 17, 18, yeah. dude. No, no. At this I, point. Was, I was 18. You were yeah. 18, then I was 17. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how to count, Anita. This, Crazy. this is hard, all right? Um, all right, let's do this. It was a fun time. Maybe K-pop was fun. Let's find out. Uh, we're going to do a World Cup for the best song of 2015. Best K-pop song of 2015. Here we go. Uh, also, uh, just a quick FYI, right? Um, up When we did 2014 and 2013, uh, I made sure to only cover one song from each artist. I'm getting rid of that rule to a degree. Um, well, and we'll explain when those come up. Um, there are also some songs that were like honorable mentions, but we didn't include them, guys. Oh, um, we'll talk about them later. Uh, love, oh, oh, later? Oh, oh. I could just list some. You want to show them now? Yeah. Lovely's Achu. It's a great song. 17 Manse, Wonder Girls, I Feel You, that band thing they did. Uh, Got Seven, Just Right. G Friend, Me Gustas 2. People might be pissed we skipped that one. Twice, mm. Guahage, their debut was this year. Mm. And then. We there was a lot of Big Bang songs, so we dropped one of them. Baby, right, is the one we dropped. Yep, Baby is the one he dropped. Yeah. Um, okay. you were you, you were like, let's include Itchy Ma by Kith Ape. Yeah, that was the best song of twenty. <laughs> that was a Itchy very Ma. popular song. <laughs> what? Bing, Underwater Bing. Squad. Yeah. Okay. Itchy Mob, Kith Ape, Jesus Christ. All right, all right, let's go in twenty fifteen. Best song. All right, right off the bat, we have Dope by BTS versus oh, You by no. Shiny. What? Oh, my God. What are the odds? Why? Uh, okay, I, I'm going to comment on View. View. This is 2015. Is the mm-hmm. prime house music, deep house SM era. View came out. Mm-hmm. Four Walls came out. Uh, Married to the Music came out. This was when SM was doing Deep right. House. They were really banging it. Those songs still hit today. View still hits today. It is Classic. like that summer song that plays in the beginning. Mm. It plays on June 1st. The first day I put on my shorts <laughs> and my t-shirt. I put that shit on. And I'm like, okay. Adam, that would be that, that. You know what I mean? Like, it's like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I had to pick five best songs. That shiny ever did. Oh. View would be on top of that list. Number one. Number Favorite one. Favorite shiny song. Followed by Lucifer and Ring Ding Dong. View, view, oh, wow. view to me kind of felt like the best pivot for them, right into yeah. the second half of the career. Yep, that mm. yep, was the pivot mm-hmm. because they they followed 2013 was Dream Girl, Why So Serious, Everybody, right? Mm-hmm. Was about, yes. about then, and that was like very K poppy, right? Yep. And then they did Very this view thing, and it was pop. like, whoa, mm. we're doing some interesting things here. But, you know, BTS Dope is one of the classics, man. Mm, <laughs> it really is. That I'm was like think. one of the songs that that's that really got the ball rolling for them, for sure. Um, I would say it yeah. kind of really came ahead with Pitam Numu, Plus Wood and Tears, but this laid the mm-hmm. groundwork for the explosion that happened for sure. Right. I was gonna say, was this the title track for this album? I forget. So, it wasn't. 
Um, That's what I was thinking. The thing with th- Dope, uh, for Hayang Yuna Part 1, this was the song that was, I think, like the secondary, pri- like a, either a pre release lead up, I forget which it was. Um, mm-hmm. And it had a crazy music video. And yes. this was around the time when K pop was slowly going viral in the internet. And while mm-hmm. Dope didn't really break out during 2015, the ball kept on rolling year after year after year after year after year. And then eventually this became one of the most iconic songs of that era for BTS. Um, so did it perform particularly well critically at the time? I don't think so. But does it have a symbolic moment for BTS? I think so, yeah. I'll put it this way. If it was I Need You instead of Dope Here, mm-hmm. yeah. mm-hmm. I would pick I Need You. Right? Really? But because it's dope versus view, I'm gonna pick view. Do you get what I'm saying? You really like, like dope. Yeah. I remember like sitting in your apartment and you were like showing me dope like the the music video. I saw it because of view. Like I still remember. I know, bro. I was I was I was I won't say that I was an early adopter for BTS, right? Mm-hmm. BTS is 2013. I would say 2015 when I need you came out, I started to get on the hype train. It's about then. Interesting. Okay. I was like I was one year early to the hype for BTS. Not uh, not too early though. But this was one of the first songs that I was like, "This is good." Whatever the- they're in the suits and ties, right? They're doing the dance, dude. Oh, bow, man. Bow, 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 bow. I feel like I kind of also have a similar opinion. Where during this time, this wasn't the song from BTS that I associated with. Like that was like the the main song that I would ascribe to them during this time period. Whereas with Shiny, I feel like at the time, this was very, very, I feel like very new to the scene. Like the type of the sound and also like the vibe that was going off. Also, the music video was very interesting for Shiny too. Um, I don't know. I feel like there was a lot of memorable stuff going on with view that even today i feel like people remember this song no let me let, let me let me put it this way um sm in 2015 a lot of risks mm-hmm. view and four walls are really unlike a lot of the other sm stuff yes yeah I agree right that. they did some interesting things and i don't think they ever recaptured that weird like wow what is this? Like, they mm. really stepped out of the comfort zone, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like they were really ahead at some point. Yeah. Like they were. I don't know. I gotta pick. I gotta pick view it. because I think for shiny view is one of the most iconic songs, and I think for yes. uh, for BTS dope is one of the bangers. But I don't think it's one of like the songs. I mm. agree. That's how I put it. Agree. Yeah. Uh, it'll it'll be quickly become a noticeable pattern. But 2015 is a very strong year for SM. Um, very and strong. I think. View making it to the next round is a clear sign of that. So, Shiny View progresses to the quarterfinals. Moving on to the second round of round of scenes. We got Shake It by Sitar versus Lionheart by SNSD. I'm going to be honest. I don't like Lionheart. (laughs) I've never liked it. Really? I I never liked it. I was a big Sonja Shide fan, man. It's not my jam. Yeah. It's really? an interesting song. <laughs> it has like a doo-wop type of sound. Right, yeah. Right. Some of the choreography is a little awkward. But, I mean, it's memorable. Yeah. I Okay. So, <laughs> SNST, Girls' Generation had two songs during the year of 2015 that were yes. wildly memorable. One is Lionheart, the other is Pool Party. I still feel like Lionheart was... Okay, it was definitely more successful than the other one. And I still feel like it even stands up better in 2024, better than the other one. So, like, I... You know, Lionheart, mm-hmm. I don't think it's that bad of a song. I, Yes, it, they took some risks with it. Um, is it as good as the other SM songs we've mentioned already on this World Cup? I don't mm-hmm. think so. But... Mm-hmm. On the other hand, Shake It by Sistar was not also my particularly favorite release from Sistar at all. I'll say, I will agree, it's not my favorite sister song, but I think it continue, it continued their reputation for, like, the summer song, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so in that sense, I think it, 
I think Shake It holds up a little bit better than Lionheart, in my opinion, as to what they were doing with their discography and like mm. how well it held up. Their career nowadays. Mm. Mm-hmm. Oh, dog, dog. So I'm leaning towards Sister. I okay. I agree that there are better Sister tracks, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I, I would even vote the party song over Lionheart. Did really? That's where I'm at. <laughs> so yeah. It's really not Lionheart. It's uh, not, not for me, man. Not for me. <laughs> All right. That's why I gotta vote for the Star Shaking. All right. Well, I mean, I, I mean, I don't really have a strong argument for either of these, so I think I can go with uh, Shake It by Sister. Moving awesome. on to oh. the quarterfinals. Next, we have round three. We have Loser oh, by oh, Big oh. Bang versus Only You by Messi. Hmm. So, Two music videos that are sort of supposed to be based in... Is Loser the one that's based in New York, too? I think they're both kind of supposed to be based. There. Loser? I don't remember the music video of Loser. Let me let me double check real quick. Uh, uh, in the meantime, Anita, what are you thinking? Oh, no, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Never mind. Okay. Um, I mean, to be honest, I feel like, I feel like one was more like commercially general public more mm, successful i guess than the other like i feel like big bang at this this year for big bang was a very interesting year i think so and to be honest i feel like looser was one of my least favorite tracks around that time really interesting but i do recognize that it was very popular regardless so Whereas um, Miss A, maybe not as much. Loser by Big Bang was the second most successful song of the year, according to Gaon Chart. It was the mm-hmm. eighth most successful compared, uh, in, according to Melon Chart. Um, it was on the Melon Chart for a, you know, I don't know how long, but um, it was weekly top one for two weeks and the monthly top one for that month. Um, it came out with Bebe, which was critically wildly acclaimed. Uh, Loser was the prime example of like their ballad, ah fucking yeah, suck kind of songs. One. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, and I think if anything, I think it is probably their best rendition of that kind of song to date. Um, yeah, I think it's a great the, the, song. dude. It's one of the best angsty songs of all time in K-pop. I agree. I mean, it's so good. Miss A, only you. It was their last single ever, right? 2015, last single ever. Oh, man, yeah. And this was the song where everyone was like, well, Suzy has become such an undeniable megastar that her run with this group is sort of over, right? Yeah. At this point. Like, we were just like, man, she's still doing Miss A. Cool. We like Miss A. Nice. Yeah. But it was kind of like the writing was on the wall at this point. The song did go number one, right? But... <laughs> At the same time, I think that Big Bang Loser is like a classic. I think that Miss A Only You is one of, is a good Miss A song, but there are other very iconic Miss A songs as well. Oh uh, yeah, I was yeah. gonna say that too. I mean, Only You it will go down as one of the more successful songs in the Miss A discography, uh, and, and if anything, it was one of the songs that were both commercially a hit and a hit with the community. Um, it yep. didn't sell particularly well, but like, is that because it, of the song? they took over a year break? So we were just happy that we got Miss A again. Exactly, you know? exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. what happened. Um, so I do think it was a, and for all intents and purposes, I think it was a great finale to the Miss A run. Um, it it yep. was yeah, it was a great song too. But loser, what can I say? I think it's one of the best songs of their whole discography. <laughs> Other than Dang. my bias, say was Faye. Like I was such a big fan, <laughs> really? dude. And you know, like back back in like 2016, after Miss A is done, I can't find Faye anywhere on the internet, right? Like oh. you know, you know, these days it's more accessible if you if an idol you like who's from a different country leaves and goes somewhere else, right? Uh-huh. Back then it was like, oh, that's it, bye, Faye. Bye. No. <laughs> like, I don't know how it was. Well, Until she came back with that one comeback that was like so sexy that people were uncomfortable by it. I remember. <laughs> She had this comeback, her solo comeback. I, I forgot, but yeah. Well, she's uh, doing um, really well in China right now, so. For sure, for yeah. sure. Good. But I, I think we picked Big Bang Loser. Loser. Moves yeah. on to the quarterfinals. Um, 
in the meantime, Taeyeon by IU versus 4 Minute by Cra- Oh, sorry. I by Taeyeon versus Crazy by 4 Minute. Ooh. <laughs> hmm. yeah, speaking of Hyuna. This is the one Ooh. featuring verbal sin, right? Uh, this was I? her first yes. solo, yeah. 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 Wait, no, this is not her first solo. What? Oh, uh, well, that's the one that I remember the most. Oh, interesting. As far as like, as her as a soloist, or maybe like after I had been introduced to you, Girls' Generation. Oh, okay, actually, you're right. This is her first official debut as a soloist. Um, right, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. I was thinking about all the, the OST she's done, I think. Yeah, yeah. She did do other stuff, but I feel like this is the one that I feel like was properly released as mm. a solo. Oh, Tulina was such oh, a banger. It's a this is a really good song. Hi, 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 hi. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but Do this four feel? minute crazy track was a That's was a monster hit. That was a out crazy of nowhere. Song. Right? They did this kind of last, the last run of four minute was like, we're just going to do this at the time. Very degenerate. They're going to collab <laughs> with Skrillex, guys. Like, you remember, like, people were just like, oh, my God, can you believe this type of music they're doing at the end? When they did Crazy and Hate, right? This last run, mm -hmm. people were like losing their minds over, over it was, four minute. It was, I feel like, a very different vibe for four minute at that period of time and i feel like the performance aspect like went up like i knew they were always capable of that but i feel like for this particular song for crazy i think it was really really enhanced like the music video i remember very well because it's just black and white and a little bit of red i want to say here and there yep yep i remember it because it was mostly like dance performance focus which is really cool um oh this is hard um, I have to, um, so I didn't, I didn't really check out crazy uh, for a minute until, uh, my friends and I were mm -hmm. hanging out and, uh, they showed me yeah, yeah. the music video. Um, and they were like, this, this is so cool. Like, you got to watch this. Like the choreo is amazing. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh. yeah. Uh, oh, you, you weren't impressed. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, I didn't like the song. I'll be honest. Um, what? Wow. This is an all-time classic. Yeah, sorry, Doug and Anita. I lied to you guys all those years ago. <laughs> those friends Bro, are you too. Like, for me, four minute is like hot issue, Ida Mimoyo, oh, yeah. and music. crazy. Those music. sum up the, the music. No, Anita, not in the like top three. Oh, top only three? Really? I'm saying like oh. if you define if you I'm saying if you define four minutes career. Mm. Like, I think no, you issue. gotta throw music in there. It's such a good song. Music, tick, 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 tick. dancing music. That yeah, was but you know win. how many? You know how many more times Modi Butova Kakaji Hot Issue is saying. That's true. No, no, Hot Issue music. And then <laughs> Irumi Boyo. Those three songs, not in that order though. Oh, but because you're not counting crazy. Yeah, bro, you you don't think this was genre defying for them at this point? I think it was. This it is was the end dude. of their career. What do you mean? No, what define what? This is no. This was such a big deal. It was such a big deal. It really wasn't compared to Inumi Moeo. Tanabara Moeo. No, Anita, he's bugging, right? This was such a big <laughs> deal at the time. Maybe the perception was very different at the time. But okay. I feel like this was... This was I remember this event. song a lot. Okay. I feel like even to this day, this song, I feel like it's associated with 4 Minute. Maybe a little bit more for Western audiences, maybe. There was like a whole like mm. plagiarism controversy. I don't think it's controversy at all, but um Oh really? Yeah, I like know. I don't know. Like it's I this is not my kind of song, I'll be honest with you. I would I could name a couple more songs that I prefer over crazy. Um This guy's a, a four minute revisionist over here talking how <laughs> it wasn't a big deal. You're crazy. I'm I do think it's a big deal. I, they had a lot of big deals. What can I say? <laughs> it was such a big deal that they got the collab with Skrillex for the second track. I like I am I me mine over this. Oh, I am I me mine. <laughs> All right, but I think Taeyeon still wins here because this is like the, <laughs> one of no, no, this is like oh, one what? of the 
<laughs> this is one of the Taeon songs, is it not? Like, yeah, yeah, right. Is it, it is. not? This is like the Taeon I mean, song. It is. It's a really career-defining song for her, I think. Hundred percent. Um, and that was like for her, it was more of a beginning. As for for a minute, it was more of a wrap up finale type this thing. Is, this is just like a push for me it could go either way like honestly i i think it really but, comes down to i like it it really solidified her as a soloist it really solidified her into a second part of her career snsd was cool still is a good run but hey i got i still got much more to show you guys and it doesn't have to be drama with t ballads you know what i mean like mm. um you know what let's let's vote against problematic boyfriends and go with tay on guys there you go Boom. Oh, there you dang. go there you go <laughs> we can't say anything now i need a can you <laughs> <laughs> i don't what? know what that was. <laughs> all right um i by Taeyeon featuring Verbal Gent moves on to the quarterfinals into round five. We have 23 by IU versus Who's Your Mama featuring Jesse by Jin Young okay. Park. I've talked about this 20 cheat track many times, right? <laughs> Y'all know I'm not the biggest fan of it. Um... Uh, <laughs> okay, Doug, you chose to put Who's Your Mama in this World Cup. This was explicitly yeah. you. Was this, not, this was a huge deal. This is like, okay. I this know. is like, this is not the beginning of Jesse, but this is like. This was the explosion of Jesse. Public. Really? Yes. 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 At least in, in my perspective of what the what I was. I'm looking at her music. songs. This the was K-pop. the song that when Jesse was popular because of Unpretty Rap Star, and then she mm-hmm. transferred that into popularity on like shows like Running Man. She didn't actually release any crazy songs herself till like Nunu Nana 2020, dude. So until then, if we're resting on the laurels of Jesse as a figure, this was the defining Jesse song for like five years. That, I mean, that was, this was the first time that I had heard of her as a musician. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, okay. Mm-hmm. I didn't think we'd have been, we'd be having this long conversation about Jesse. The defining moment for Jesse for me was we're not a team. This was a competition. And everybody well, knew of Jesse <laughs> previous, like 10 uh-huh. years before this. When she was Jessica yeah. H.O. Like, everyone knew Ho Yeon Ju. No Americans did, dude. The, I mean, Not you guys American. aren't the center of the world, is what I'm going to say. I'm sorry. That's like, true. That's yeah. true. What I'm saying, though, is that I feel like, from my perspective, it was her entering a new era in her career as a musician. Like, not only um, as a, a person good in the survival. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And I, I associate that song. Who's your mama? In as for that West, beginning. For Western fans, we don't had no clue who no Jessica H O is, right? Unfortunately, we did. We were we not. We did not. We yes, did yeah. not. We yes, no clue. Yes. I'm pretty rap star starts January 29th, 2015. Mm-hmm. This is the first song she releases after I'm pretty rap star ends. Which yes, is good, I think, because it, it kind of kept up that momentum. She was on this track because of we're not a team. This is a competition. Right. Of course. Yeah. And qu- to be quite frank with you, I don't think Jesse is the artist that relies on the her defining song. Jesse is more of a celebrity than a musician. I, I don't I'm sorry if that's a hot take, but I, I think, think that's a hot take. Really I think that's a huge hot take. Yeah. <laughs> God, we we man, you're really shitting on certain people's careers here today. Jesse's a great celebrity. <laughs> she's a great talent. She's very character she's 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 her, I love her character. I think this, she's funny this, as this hell. This is the reason why this was very defining for her because she released Sun on Me in twenty fifteen. But the general public is ain't gonna listen to that, right? But this was the Wait, track I did. This was but. the track <laughs> where JYP is like, yo, this popular girl, I made a track. It's talking about butts. This girl got a big butt. <laughs> Let's go. Okay. I think it was a great kickoff to a round two for Jin Young Park. Cause yeah, oh, the, for JYP? For JYP, yeah. Like, oh, okay. if I think about all the songs he released from 2010 onwards after No Tear, No Cry or some shit, whatever that was, um, this was probably, I, actually, I, I, had to, I thought about it, and this would probably be the most popular song he's released, the most successful one. Um, mm. And up until that point, I'm not going to lie, he was heavily reliant on the shit he released early 2000s, late 90s, like, yeah. um, uh, I already have a swing, woman. swing, swing, my baby, or his debut, which was, yeah. um, 
which he still performs because he doesn't have a lot of hit songs. Um, who's your mom? Is, I think it, it really defines JRP as like I am a pop star that doesn't rely on my company's talent to be he, successful. He translate um this song into "I'm so sexy" with you just suck at the Infinite Challenge song thing. It was right after this one. Mm, yeah, he translated it into that, right? Yeah, which was a great move because then he got double general like population popular again yep. real quick with those two things. And like um that. Speaking of Infinite Challenge, like that this year of like the Infinite Challenge like music event was like huge, huge. Like JYP was on it, IU was on it, was on it. Big Bang was mm-hmm. on it, um, Hyogo was on it, yep. and that oh, blew yes. them up. Um, Zion T was on it. He was also really popular this year. Yangma Bridge. Mm-hmm. So, um, are, uh, give me your give me your elevator pitch for IU twenty three. <laughs> Why it's a more defining song of twenty fifteen than. It is also a definer of the second phase of the IU career. It is okay. the mm-hmm. character shifter. It was the controversy of the year um, that people have come around oh. to in her support over time. It has aged really mm-hmm. well. It is a part of Give a more really well made album. Yeah. Give more context on that. To the what was the controversy again? The, the controversy... I, 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 sorry, I forgot that... Um, okay, the controversy was that the 23 music video um, mm-hmm. infa- infantilizes IU at the same time of sexualizing her. So they were like, there she's being infantilized and also sexualized. So in, there's a bit of like a child pornography thing going on here, sex, child sexualization thing going on here. Um, mm. There were other parts to that music video, uh, sorry, controversy as well. Uh, like other songs in the album, as well as a con- uh, yeah, plagiarism of controversy and whatnot. That was a huge mess. I'm not gonna go into the details there. I, that's go go look it up on Google there. But um, mm-hmm. I think people have eventually come around to it in support of her, um, which is why she's still wildly popular. Um, and I think all, all in all, it was a really well made song too. It's a provocative message. It is something completely unexpected, and it is wrapped up in a nice pot package like it is probably one of the best songs of 2015 i spoke a lot someone say something these are some very fair points you said sir. <laughs> i feel like this is tough so... because mm-hmm. the, the issue i'm having right is that mm-hmm. when people if you were to lay both of these songs in front of two in, like people who were listening to k-pop in 2015 right mm-hmm. and they go May, uh, from a Western perspective, my perspective, right? Mm-hmm, and you say, which of these were bigger? Mm-hmm. I feel like yeah. 9 out of 10 people would pick the JYP song. Really? Okay. Yeah. That's, Anita, I mean, that's you kind of agree, right? Maybe I not 9 of out of 10, but the vast majority, I think, would say, man, like, this song is still memed upon today. This that's track. true. Like, mm. people mention this all the time. This is like the Jesse thing, even though it's not even Jesse's track. People associate this <laughs> so much with Jesse. Got it from my mama, you know? Like... Big, big waste, you know, all this stuff that you were saying in this track. It was I mean, crazy. little waste, little waste. Oh, yeah, little waste. <laughs> <laughs> Even the JYP memes, like, began with this song, too. Like, yeah, right? Yeah. This started JYP the meme, right? Yeah. I agree that this is really defining for Ayo because she went from, like, Red Shoes 2013, right? Friday or That's all the modern song. times thing. Mm-hmm. The 2015. And then the, the career-defining palette for her, right? Obviously. That was, like, mm-hmm. monster success. Um... Like I know, I, I get that that uh, Cheshire or whatever was was or cat. How does she pronounce Cheshire. it? Is it, is it Cheshire. Oh my God, we're doing this thing again. Cheshire. <laughs> I understand that it was a big album, right? But like, oh, the impact. I uh, I lean to the right. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I uh, I think all in all, like that uh, this this mini album is quite possibly the best album I has released. It's the best package. It oh. is best written. Best produced. It's fucking best I like, really well I like that you think that because for someone like me, I would think like what was the the, the, the peak, right? If mm-hmm. there's a peak, right? Mm-hmm. I would think it's Pallid, personally. I think Pallid exists because Cheshire exists. Fair. My argument for Pallid was that there was four number one tracks on it. Okay. Ooh. But this ain't a 2017 <laughs> World Cup, sir. This is a 2015 no, that, no, World Cup. No, that's what I know. Yeah, I was no, but you know what I mean, right? That's a big two shame. Career defining. Okay, career yeah, defining. Yeah. There was four number ones on it. But like, in all honesty, I would choose like two or three songs from JYP over this one. 
in the other modern ones. era in the modern era oh like no. in all of his career yeah. and the no, only no, no, song I, I would choose over 23 for me is like good day so you're saying this only is that the one second, you're saying this is the second best iu song let me look back. What else is there? <laughs> it really fucking isn't Marshmallow. Lilac is great. I don't think it's the second best. Uh, fu- uh, Palette. Palette's really good, too. I wouldn't say okay. second, though. Okay. What else is there? The you night. didn't like Red Shoes? Red Shoes is great. Third place. Oh. You gonna tell me yeah, so Boo is better than this? You know what? <laughs> because you've, the, you've, you've hot take that this is the second best IU song, I'll give it to you. I'll vote on that. Hey. <laughs> I'll let, you, I'll let you, you go down this path. She is the only musician to have gotten that much level of hate on the internet and still mm-hmm. be wildly successful. Make a comeback. Make a huge mm-hmm. comeback. I wasn't too much of a netizen back there on the internet. Mm-hmm. I had no clue there was this whole hate thing going on oh, really? back then. Dude, yeah. I had I no clue. Very, very vaguely about I it. I remember vaguely, but I don't remember it being like as big of a deal as you, you're saying it was. Because on the West, we gave no shits. We were like, it's I, you track, yay. Right? <laughs> no, no, this was the moment where, like, every adult I know past the age of, like, 35 was suddenly convinced I was, like, the demon, like, a demon. Really? Oh, look, no. look at how long. See, Anita, Anita, we had no clue, right, that any of this I, happened. I mean, look at I how mean, long I had this an is. idea. I just didn't think it was that big. I didn't think bad. it was that big, yeah. I mean, I remember there being like, oh, yeah, it's kind of risque, the thing, the themes, right? But outside of that, I don't remember there being this much discourse, but apparently there was. Wow. Dude, the music video director released storyboards. That's crazy. I had no clue. We're learning, Anita. There you go. We're learning. 2015. Wow. Let's give it to Warren, Anita. He made the take. It's the All second right. best IU song. And if it's the second best IU song, it's probably an iconic one. So we'll give it to you. IU 23. One of the best songs of 2015. Move I'm on. Vote ag- I'm, I'm telling you, I'm going to vote against it almost every round from here. Uh, well, to say. <laughs> I'm just happy <laughs> it's moving on. All right. Uh, I'll give you it. I'll give you it, though. 23 by IU. Moves on to the round of quarterfinals over Amani Minukuni by JYP featuring Jesse. Round six. We have Call Me Baby oh. by EXO. Oh, my God. Versus no. I Need You oh by BTS. Oh, my God. Don't do this. Are you going to start? I'm going to pee my pants. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What the fuck? We literally Why? started this because <laughs> we was like, I don't need to go to the restroom. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry. Um, okay. Do you? Why? Okay. From, okay. Okay. When this song released in 2015, mm-hmm. I was not a K-pop mm-hmm. fan. I was a part of the okay. general public. I heard right. Crazy by 4 Minute because y'all played it for me. Right, right. And I never heard of I Need You until like three or four years ago. Mm, okay, well, here's the thing. I Need You, I think it's a very good BTS song, but it was before they actually hit that big popularity right. wave. Right. So I feel like not a lot of... Maybe maybe some more devoted fans will know of like how big I Need You was for BTS, right? Right. I think like it, this it was, was definitely their breakout. Right. Mm. In, in, more domestically, I would say though. Whereas EXO, Call Me Baby just like solidified the hype that they had been building for a while. Call Me Baby was is I honestly Call Me Baby is a great song. I love that song. I think didn't we have like a stupid fight about this the last time we did a World Cup too? It was like I think, did we? Yeah, no. Like I, y'all said, y'all were like trying to support this other EXO song as like the best song of like EXO career, and I was like, no, it's Call Me no, Baby. It was a uh, Ururong. Ururong. Okay. Okay. But see, that's that's a different like career defining song for them. Call Me Baby, I feel like happened because Ururong was able to have that success okay yes um but i like call me baby more than it wrong like way <laughs> more okay yes if you're just going by like preference right like way more it's just a better song it's like, way more just like just like, <laughs> sorry let's let's put it this let's put it in perspective for um i need you before mm-hmm. i need you on circle chart right um previously gone back in the day, right? Mm-hmm. They had never charted higher than 45, right? Right, that's what we're saying. Yeah. And then yeah. I Need You charted number five. It was a big bump for them. And this it came like- out of nowhere. 
this was the moment that put them on the map. Mm-hmm. They they four x they four times their sale total with this song. Wow, their wow. previous high. They went from selling like two hundred thousand um, copies to eight hundred thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But call, I remember "Call Me Baby" and thinking I have never seen cooler people in my life. <laughs> this music video, no, this music video with the one take and the dancing, and yeah. Kai putting on the, the 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 blue headphones on the Lambo, like oh yeah, these oh, yeah. are iconic images. Is and especially that one part where they do like the body roll, like one guy, like one guy yeah, comes out and another guy comes out effect. when it's Lay into Dio into Sehun, dude. Like I remember these images, right, mm. from this music video. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Oh, I never thought I thought they, I was like, is Kai the hand, most handsome person in the world? That's what I was thinking. <laughs> <is their point. laughs> and then like Dio in when they're in the, the gray box and Dio's in the blue leather jacket, like oh, yeah. just see I remember that outfit. Yeah. And they're all wearing the black ripped jeans and then everyone had black ripped jeans okay. all of a okay. sudden after this. That, that's when I wanted black ripped jeans. Exactly. You guys never had black ripped jeans. Music video? No. This was like it, dude. This was the the, 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 the I thought, start. I thought you guys really liked the emo music. What happened to that? I didn't. Even I never the jeans, got though. into the fashion. Come on, yeah, dude. I ain't. I ain't. I ain't wearing the straps on my pants from Hot Topic. <laughs> it ain't happening. Okay, you fine. see me? I can't pull that off. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, you never know. You have never shown it to me. I would. I. I will buy you one, and you tell me. You let me know. Um. <laughs> okay, I'll put it this way. You're putting I it in a lot you? of ways. No, no. <laughs> For me, I need you uh-huh. as my favorite BTS song. Oh, really? Really? It is. Yes. Oh, I did not know over, that. Over, the, over Fire, over Blood, Sweat, and Tears, over Dynamite, over yeah, all of no. that. I think I Need You has, like, the best chorus ever. I need you, girl. Very yeah. memorable. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's my favorite chorus out of all the songs they've released. Right? From minute, I thought you were gonna sing Davi Chi. Are you like, I need you, girl, baby, baby, baby. baby. You Sorry. can't go right into that, right? <laughs> yeah, it's my, it's like my favorite song. But I think that if this was one year later and this was Blood, Sweat, and Tears, I'd pick Blood, Sweat, and Tears over Call Me Baby. But if it's Call Me Baby versus I Need You, I'm gonna pick Call Me Baby. Okay. Yeah. Like your your time will come, young lads. Wait one year. <laughs> you know. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, I'm, a, I'm gonna say young lads, but yes. Um, I you would get what I'm saying, though, right? Yes. Like I was saying, like, like mm-hmm. we're almost there, right? We're almost there. But call me baby, call me baby. They still do it on like every single male competition show. Even the female ones do it all the time. This is true. It's covered so. It's so. Much. It's so covered. Mm. Okay. Well, call me baby, but EXO seems to be the consensus, which moves on to the. Quarter. I need you. Still really good. Still. A banger from BTS. Here's here's something else. One thought to consider: YouTube mm-hmm. views, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Call me baby has about double the views as I need you. Okay. Well, that kind of makes sense to me, though. At the right? time, right? At the based At the on time. 2015, yeah. And like I said, like a lot of the of the people that follow the popularity right of BTS after they hit it really big a couple years after. Some, sometimes they don't always go back and listen to all the discography. Some of them do. I think majority of them are um, familiar with like the previous releases. I just feel like at the time when they were released, mm-hmm. they they didn't quite get the push that they should have. Is is Call Me Baby the last time we have like Tao in this group? Right? I think. Ooh. Yeah. 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 I think it's. A, I think Chris. I think Chris Wu had left already. Wuhan had left. Wuhan had left. But but like, th- I think this was the song where they're like, we're going to show the world that we still got it. You know, mm. we don't yeah. need these guys who have left us. We still got it. <laughs> and then another guy left. And then, <laughs> and, then, and, then, well, and then another guy's kind of left. Sort of. Like, and then a guy got married. <laughs> that's that's okay. Hey, he's back. He came yeah. back. Um, <laughs> so let's pick Call Me Baby. Right. One more thing. Yeah. Um, Dope and I Need You are both here. Um, I think, all in all, I Need You was the breakup for 2015. Dope has become one of the early BTS songs that like like symbolized that era for their career because it has it's a, ha, got yep. like yep. Uh, 774 million views on YouTube right now, which is God way damn. more than I Need mm. You. Way more than Call Me Baby too. 
Um, it's just their success uh, happened in a in interesting timing for both of those two. Um, Call Me Baby is a uh, Call Me Baby. So, Call Me Baby. It's almost like a yeah. baton toss here, right here. Moves mm. on to the quarter finals. In round seven, we have Four Wolves by <laughs> FX versus Heart Attack by AOA. Man, AOA was AOA was so much fun in general, but Four, four walls. walls is going to go down. Like we, the three of us think Four Walls is one of the most iconic K-pop songs of all time, right? Yep. I know we always so, talk about this. I feel like it was so groundbreaking in just its sound, like. And the choreography too was so cool. And also for them as a group, it was a very, I feel like it was a tough moment in time for FX, right? Sully was no longer a part of the group. Mm -hmm. um, first comeback as four members. I don't know. It was, I don't know. It felt reassuring to see that they were still performing and like the quality of the music was still really there. And that they were also experimenting because I've always asso associated FX with having a more experimental sound, mm -hmm. um, kind of like the sister group of Shiny. So I don't know. I have very fond memories of Four Walls. I, least, I still think I'm gonna make a song. confession. Oh, what? okay. I never liked Heart Attack all that much. <gasps> what? <Ooh. laughs> I thought that the song the. I thought that part was a little grating. I've Sorry, always you, thought that. you you cut out when you said that. What part? I always thought that the the cho up, that 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 singing the really high falsetto part, was never my jam. Dude, I don't know why, but Discord is just like muting you out whenever you do that. It's like okay, well the, the also doesn't like that part. <laughs> you know, you know the you know the part where cho up sings that really high intro, right? You know, like the one of the defining sounds of the song. Da -da 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 -da. I you I remember the chorus. You don't know like Shim Kung He. Da, ba, 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 like the ba, ba, literal ba, ba. intro of the song. Are you guys crazy? Am I? Pa, you, pa, am pa, I pa, 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 that thing? Yeah, that part, the really high part. Yes. I've hated it ever since. Okay, I mean, first of all, I can't believe you don't like that part. <laughs> I feel like that's one of the most iconic lines of AOA. I was, I, I was so sure you were referring to something else. No, I never liked that part. Dang. I also thought the lacrosse concept was kind of trash. I still do think it's kind of <laughs> trash. Dude, we don't, they don't even know what lacrosse hey. is over there. I, that's, just... that's exactly what I thought. <laughs> that's exactly what I thought. Like, why is it a lacrosse concept? <laughs> um, <laughs> that's exactly what I've been thinking for the last nine years, dude. <laughs> okay. And I don't like this concept. <laughs> if I think about AOA, um, their prime was four songs. They had a big middle in their career. That way they were wildly popular, which was mm -hmm. short skirt, short hair, um the uh like a cat and then heart attack um personally i would say good good luck is kind of in there but not as much in there good luck the the, the yes like um the beach theme one yes the um, baywatch theme one sure throw that into i personally like heart attack the most of those four um, no. really? I think that's no. like, i think that's one of the last songs brave bros put out that was like really good I'm a mini skirt and short hair enthusiast. Panic, panic, put a sail. Like, that part is so iconic. I can't believe you don't like that part. It's just I don't like, like that. What four is walls. Do you like it more than four walls? No. No, no. Dude, four walls is like <laughs> That's no. the question. <laughs> no. No. Um, four walls is great. I watch it all the time. I even watch that video of like the producers, the or original English demo oh, version yeah. of I it too. That, too. that exists. That uh, that, like, yeah, dude. Great. There. Okay. Fun fact. Uh, there were official SM approved remixes from two producers, mm. 250 and Frank, who ended up becoming oh. Nuji's producers. What do you uh, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The Frank, the Frank remix is the one they used up. Uh, sorry, the two. I think you know. I don't remember which. One of the remixes was used for their Mama performance, which I still go back mm. to all the time. Um, this mm -hmm. ended up becoming one of my introductions to one of my favorite producers of all time. So, <sighs> Four Walls is... Great stuff. Yeah. Um, Four Walls is such a good track. It's a perfect track. Ooh. Four Walls moves on to the quarterfinals with the last round of... Oh, no! Round of no. the... Dum, 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 dum. We have Dum Dum Dum, 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 dum. versus Bing Bing. No. 
Bang bang bang. Sorry, bang bang bang. Dum dum bite uh, versus oh. bing bing bing. Uh, red velvet versus. Wait, bang. this is so hard. Nah, bang bang bang's gonna win here. Um, I like Wait, dum but dum. Wait, but was so good. I know it was good, baby, 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 baby. baby. But I, like I was that hearing one. it I everywhere. I don't, I don't like the the AOA one, but I like the, the baby, 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 baby. I like that though. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> baby, it was windy. hard. I never said it's gonna be easy, what? buddy. <laughs> wow, Wait, these to are be two honest, great songs. These are these two songs are like the defining songs for me for 2015. Like these are the songs that I think of when I think of 2015. Um, because I I heard Dum Dum so much all over campus and different orgs covering it, and then Bang 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 also was. And Everywhere. then we did it in Shina at some point. Exactly. It, yeah. It was crazy. Um also that thing with the with the, the duke and you throw the ball thing. The oh choreography my god. Is so good. Yeah. We're dumb dumb. You used to randomly and dance then... that all the time and when we were <laughs> we'd meet up. <laughs> of course. <laughs> um Dum Dum's great. Uh, I think if anything if okay. It's the best thing LDN Noise has done other than four walls. I don't know if that's a hot take. Um Mm. LDN Noise is the producer for a uh, bunch of SM songs around this period. Uh, they did View, Married to the Music, Dum Dum, Red Dress, uh, Four Walls. Those are some pretty good songs. Yep. Uh, they also <laughs> did. What else is here in here? Uh, shoot. Why by oh, Taeyeon. Red Velvet. Lotto oh. by XO. Fire Truck by NCT. Uh, let's go. Power by XO. The list goes on, buddy. Um, but bang, bang, bang. I'm can, sorry. can we tell oh, SM no. if you're ever gonna end Ed, Ed Red Velvet, right? If you're ever going to, right? There's rumors, right? If you're ever gonna end Red Velvet, can you do a goodbye world tour? People would go ham. It print <laughs> money. It would print money. I, not yet, though. Would, not yet. I'm just saying, if they ever decide <laughs> yeah. to. Oh man, I think I think at this point, Red Velvet feels underrated as a group in terms of how good they've been. Music wise. Yeah. Mm. They just feel a little bit overshadowed by the legacies of Twice and Blackpink, right? Mm. But man, Red Velvet has some amazing songs. I think Red Velvet have has like the best discography compared to anyone else in that generation of musicians. Oh, I, I will agree with this. Personally, yeah. The the full album, right? That for this song, like uh, the, the red for which Dum Dum is the title track. Yeah, the red. My favorite album from Red Velvet. It's a good ass album. It's, okay. it's a great album. This I was into that on repeat my freshman year of college. Dum Dum is the song that was like, man, Red Velvet are great, right? Because you, you do 2014, mm. Happiness Be Natural, Automatic, which is still my like top all-time underrated things they did was Automatic, right? Mm -hmm. They had mm. the Ice Cream Cake, which was great, and then Dum Dum was right First win. Right? Mm. Yeah. Ice Cream Cake is when they shifted the course a little bit. Uh, they threw Wendy yes. into the thing. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, Yeti into the thing. Yeti. Yeti, Yeti um, into the thing. And then they got a little weird in a good way, mm, right? Mm. <laughs> they went ham with that one. Um, oh. That was a great song. But, but bang, bang, bang. Like, come on, guys. Okay, I have a very vivid memory of this song at, like, a karaoke. And it was, like, such a such a cool experience because you, you know when it's coming, like, where the drop is coming, and everybody just goes crazy. This, it's the, a great song. This is the one song you, you sing at the end of the karaoke run. And I sing it. Yes. I do this. <laughs> <laughs> whether I'm with my Korean friends or whether I'm with my non-Korean friends, we just we play we do this one at the end. It's a great song. And everybody everyone, stands up. Everyone knows it. Everyone stands and, up. Yeah, and yeah. Like, oh, you know, like, it's like that's, 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 that one. Um, this is Bing Bang Bang is the most successful song of uh, 2015 uh, through multiple mm -hmm. metrics. Uh, Melon chart number one, Gown chart number one. Um, yeah, I. What can I say? It is the most successful song of that whole made run. Uh, it was uh, number one for 12 days. Uh, I could keep going. I don't think I really need to. So they released Fantastic Baby in 2012, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then they essentially take a bit of a break, right? It was a long ass it, break. Yeah. It was like three year break. And then they started to release songs Loser, Bebe, and then Bang 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 was the first time you felt like prime big bang is back you know what i mean like the high energy mm. shit like mm. we have a party started here right oh my god it was so good it's still so good i've never the seen banger. like 
this is the quintessential YG festival song. Right? Oh, yeah. This was when the equation <laughs> <Blueprint>. worked. Yeah. <laughs> this was when the formula worked. This was when the formula was fresh, new. It was like, yeah. Not it the- was hype. No, the whole song's a festival, but then we get a double festival at the end. You know, we <laughs> yeah, double down we double on down. it. Yeah. We double down at the end. I love Dum Dum, but Bang 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 is John. Oh, like, no. It's got to win here. It has to win. Yeah. I, yeah, it's, it's Bang Bang Bang. I'm sorry. Um, hey. Bang 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 by Bang Bang wins and moves on to the quarter finals. All right, we can go through this. Oh, good. Oh, <laughs> right, no. Sorry, we got 23 you? versus Bing, Bing, Bing. Oh, my God. Sorry, okay. are you? Um, you know what? I, I said I'd argue for 23. I can't with this one. <laughs> Thank you. So I don't have to argue against you. So bang, bang, bang. Right, guys? Hey, right, bang, bang, bang. Yes. That's the one here. Round two of the quarterfinals. We got loser versus four walls. Four walls. Four walls. Four walls. Four walls. Yeah. FX four walls beats. I'll be honest, like, Loser's great, but I like Bebe way more than Loser. Like, Loser's mm. Loser borderline's a little too mopey. A little bit, a little bit. I agree. It, yeah, it's very self-deprecating and depressing. You know, yeah. a little bit. Mm. Yeah. Four walls moves on to the next round. Round three, we got Shake It by Sistar versus I by Taeyun. I. 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 Okay. <laughs> I like this time. Do you, do you want to argue for Shake It, Anita? Maybe you do you want to have a shake go at convincing it, Shake it for me. Um, I mean, the thing is, I like the song, but I feel like it's not as momentous or like their best summer track, to be honest. Whereas I, very, very significant song for Taeyeon in that moment, that period of time. Yeah. Also, I mean, I can see it, yeah. Also, I have, like, a lot of personal memories with I. Like, it was, this was, like, the first song. This was when I was getting into, like, making music on my own. And I was, like, this was the first mm. song I remember, like, trying to, like, remix. Um, This is not oh. online, by the way. This, it was fucking terrible and awful. I, by Dayon, moves what? on to the next round. <laughs> round four, we got View versus oh, Call Me Baby. No. I vote no. View. Oh my god. View, 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 view. You can't tell me the music video is not iconic because it is. Okay. In this case, I feel like I would choose a song that I feel like was more genre defining. Not only for the group, but also for like the sound in general for other other groups to follow. Yeah. I would go with View. There you go. Smart. Smart. I would vote for Call Me Baby, but you know, I, like oh, I want both. Want. I want both to move on. Okay. I, need, in the, I have a question. Actually, yeah. no, it might happen. Never mind. I'm going I have a I have a this versus that, but I need to see what the outcomes are here. Oh, okay. I, I have to go back to what I need to say. The DNA of View is still in K pop. The reason we do Deep House mm. today, the reason people do that, it goes back to View, goes back to Four Walls, those two. It's unarguable view keep going keep going keep going Moves i guess on. view wins i would vote for exo there all right so we have semi-finals we oh, have ping ping no. ping versus view no. okay before we get to that anita <laughs> because we're not going to yeah. get the matchup four yes. walls or view pick one <gasps> yo evil that's man what I wanted, that's what i wanted to happen that's the toughest one right isn't it that might still happen um it could happen still if we vote a certain way yeah but i'm gonna pick bang 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 here i'm i'm voting view. for view here so Oh, sh- really? Yeah. <gasps> I, what? I, 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 there's multiple I Big Bang. <laughs> there are multiple Big Bang songs I like more than Bing Bing Bang. Haru Haru. Mm. Twilight Sunset. Bay Bay. Well, okay, so th- we're talking best of 2015. 2015 okay, specifically. Yeah. I'm thinking best of 2015 specifically. I think View is one of the songs that grew over time, and you, you we've recognized how great it is over time. But in 2015 mm. itself, if you had to pay, what was the best song? Bang, bang, bang. Okay, you say this, but then again, the song of the year for 2023, according to us, was not Ditto, and that was literally the most successful song of 2023. <laughs> so I don't know what to say. Like you, all, you know no, what I mean? The best song of 2023. I'm gonna revise this. Is XG Left Right <laughs> is the best song of 2023. If you're I gonna say that, that, it's it's View with Shiny for me. Doug is a converted it's, man. I'm I can't converted. Say that. XG is number one. What's the fans <laughs> called in that? I don't even remember. But that, yeah, I'm what a, whatever I don't they know. are. Uh, 
Wait, okay. Hypothetical question. I'm an alpha. Walls. I'm an alpha. Bro, alpha dog. <laughs> oh, Didn't even go. know what oh, oh, yes, 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 yes. That's what it is. Hypothetical between four walls and view. I feel... Um, based on, like, the sound? I would one is cooler. Th- I feel like one was very, very cool to me. I don't think it was ever recreated quite that way. Like, I don't think K-pop went that route. And I would say, like, FX has a more interesting sound, more inter- an interesting interpretation of the sound, whereas View had a more commercially successful sound i want to say yeah, later true. on yeah so i guess in that sense maybe i would pick you oh. bang, bang, bang. Bang, bang. but but for this matchup <laughs> okay if i'm being truthful to like the year right like what was like a top song for the year i feel like it has to be bang 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 but I don't know. I feel like View. And you call yourself a shiny fan. You, I am a shiny you fan, your, but I feel like we're we're judging this based based on the year as well. I, I see. I would say I'm a VIP over a shawl, and I'm view. I'm I, actually I'm doing the same shit, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. All right. Well, it's two for the one. Uh, Bing 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 by Bing Bing. Uh, Bing 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 Bing. I love Moves you on. though. To the next round. Shiny. Sure. You just chose Big Bang over Shiny on you know, I can't. I listen to you way more than Bang 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 though. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, round two. Oh, you got Taeyeon I four versus walls. Four Walls by FX. Four Walls. I love Taeyeon, but Four Walls has to win here. Okay, I'll be honest. <sighs> what unlucky matchups. No, no, I'll be honest. The fact that I got here this far is she got kind of lucky. Exactly. Kind of surprising. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's sort of like how uh, Shake It got lucky. It got past round one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let's be honest. Yeah. All right. Four walls moves on. The this final is round. The matchup. We have the general public pick, the commercially successful song of the year. We have Big Bing Bing versus a Bye Big Bang versus the critically acclaimed, none <laughs> like it, unique reinterpretation we, of we, the pals. We, we have four walls by FX. We have more like, do you like K-pop or do you know a lot about K-pop? <laughs> you know what I mean? That's like the <laughs> argument here. Like, are you deep in it or are you are you a fan? It's like, the you know? general public pick versus the cri- critic the connoisseur pick. pick yeah. Right? yeah, that's what yeah. this is right here. Like the 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 people who chose four walls are the people who are like, oh well, you know, uh, I I drink indie fucking hop beers. <laughs> They're like, oh, you know, uh, Four Walls was only possible because of the release of Fruity Loops number 6.0 during the year, <laughs> where you could layer the sounds on top of each other like this. <laughs> what the fuck does FL Studio have anything to do with any of this? I don't know, dude. You know <laughs> what, what I mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it is true, loops. though. <laughs> no, it's I mean, not. What, it's, does, it's, what does Four no, Walls have anything no, to do with Fruity that. Loops? Not <laughs> <laughs> the perception I'm saying. Oh. Of the two times. <laughs> yeah, the perception. <laughs> Guys. Like, you, you could go up and ask anyone this question, and it gives you a lot of insight <laughs> on how they feel about K-pop. <laughs> Can you not, right? Oh, what what do I What's my criteria? Best of 25 in terms of what was the most critically acclaimed best song, or do I vote for what I think the best song by itself is? Like, no, musically speaking. You choose what the best song of the year I think you take both. Year. Yeah. Take both into consideration, I think. They were good at two things differently to a different degree. Mm. This was my I, dilemma with Shiny. <laughs> I am going to lead to towards Big Bang on mm-hmm. this for the reason that this song is like this song defines not only Big Bang, but their entire goddamn company. Nine years later, still. Oh God! Wait, that's a really yeah, good point, actually. That's true. <laughs> and that company, you might not call them recently, but for the last ten years, was probably a top three. Well, they were a top three, probably a top two company in the in yeah. the genre. Back in the day, they were, yeah. And we still use songs like this as examples of what songs from that company are still trying to accomplish all the time. The blueprint. 
Oh yeah, the cover art is literally blue too. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, I mean, that's why I need the pick. Bang, bang, bang here. This, Although I think Four Walls is a better song. This I is agree. true. This is K-pop. I, I I can't ignore the amount of influence it has had over the commercial success of of the industry and the way you view K-pop and the way it's influenced Big Bang. It's influenced. Um, Teddy YG into producing production. for Blackpink, uh, mm. Somi, and as well as Baby Monster. The way, uh, the way I also put it is Bang 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 isn't a track you'll, like, let's say you meet someone who has no clue about K-pop, you ain't gonna show them Bang Bang Bang. That's the first song. They're gonna be like, what the F is this? Right? <laughs> you could show anyone Four Walls, and you could say, this is, look at, listen to this track right here, right? Appreciate and like, the, whoa. yeah, the instrumental, yeah. the vocals, everything. I think but yeah, big, big, big. If this was the best electronica of the year of 2015, mm. four olds might win. <laughs> what about no, View? Bang 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 needs to win here. No, View is not a pop to. song though. View is not, sorry. View is a pop song though. View can't. That's not going on though. Electronica. <laughs> this can't. Four olds can. Um, yeah, I, I gotta I, give it to Bing Bing Bing. Are we all go. in favor of Bing Bing Bing? Yeah, I think we yes, have. Yes, yes, yes. Give it its flowers. The song. Of 2015 goes to Bing 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 Ba Big Bing off of their second EP of the year and the second part of their four part series made album part A. Bing 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 by Big Bang wins song of the year of 2015. Wow, it was a long World Cup, but we finally made it, guys. We did um, it. It's I was been invested a, in the music. Yeah. I've been very invested because this was like peak me listening to a lot of things. Yeah, I right? remember. It's a fun <laughs> era. Um, hey. It's been a fun episode 266. We've had a fun time. If you want us to do more of these years, um, let us know because this is a f fun experience, um, experiment mm -hmm, for us mm -hmm. to do. Gets us to reminisce, gets us to argue over what is K-pop and what is success. Yeah, let, a lot of fun things here. Let us know if you guys want 2016. That's when we're going to start getting twice in Blackpink and, 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 yep. and Red Velvet. And oh my like God. All right. We'll see you guys next week when we cover IU and G-Idol. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.